and welcome to Mazza Media. It is Saturday night, May the 16th, and we are doing a special watch party on 2B tonight on the Roku TV st uh, stick. I am Mark, uh, your host, and with me um, are two of the three regular panel members. You may know them as Dan. What's going on, Dan? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and Dan will want to be wanting to do this for a long time. We're finally giving him that. I up. have. Right. I have. <laughs> and also from the West Coast, all the way over in Nevada, Eric, what's going on? Howdy ho! <laughs> <laughs> Eric, are there any aliens in Nevada tonight in the desert? Any Area 51 sightings? Or... Uh, I mean, what else is new? Probably no. Okay. I mean, it wouldn't be surprising if there was any, but as far as I know, none. Yeah, there we go. No alien sightings. All right, so folks, we're going to be watching uh, No Holds Barred tonight on uh, Facebook Live and uh, on Roku, really. But we're just going to be doing our kind of pretty much a commentary tonight of the movie, and um, we're just going to go ahead and sync up our uh, streams right now. So here we go, guys. Um, just get your uh, play button ready, and on three, one. Uh, not this is this is the t uh, test. One, two, three. And as soon as I say three, boom, hit that enter button. Ready? One, two, three. Go. All right, mine's loading up now. Your program. Yeah, mine is doing the, the thing, your program. Oh, V8. I got a V8 commercial. I got a laundry commercial, damn it. What the hell? Damn it. <laughs> we can't I got a, um, AAP. And what the AARP? Hell? AARP. <laughs> no. That's funny. Advanced Auto Parts. All right, my Sorry. movie's loading now. Yeah, okay. Does it say RJL Entertainment? RJL Entertainment. Yep, it's coming right up. All right. Oh, my head is still going. See, freaking Nevada. We're going to pause it to catch up. Okay, there we go. I pause it on Image Entertainment. Image Entertainment. Let's the movie start. All right. This will go to like the first frame, Dan. Okay. Yeah, because it's my World Wrestling Entertainment logo. I'm on Bobby. Image Entertainment. Jeez, damn it. Freaking a Roku in Nevada. What the hell, Roku in Nevada? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell, one man band? Uh, that's the old logo. Hey, that's Cox Internet. All right, pause it on Hulk Hogan in. All right, okay. pause it at 45 seconds. Just one man band. All right, everyone, uh, let me know when you're paused at 45 Hulk seconds. Hulk Hogan, kid. Hulk Hogan, brother. We were so queued up so nicely. Okay. Um, Eric's, Eric's Roku screwed him over. Yeah, I'm 45 no, seconds now. Not even Roku. You're at 45 seconds, Eric? Yeah. All right, ready? One, go. two, three, go. There we go. All right. Then I'll hold Bard, uh, I'll hold Bard logo popping up now. Yep. There we go. All right, we're good. Starring Kurt Sorry, Fuller. Kurt Fuller. Perfect. Yep. It looks like we're oh, queued up. Gosh, Kurt Fuller. <laughs> <laughs> I had them committed at Belgium. Joan Park Severance. Hospital. Yeah. I oh, enjoy uh, Kurt Fuller. He was in. Uh, he started becoming a regular in the show Psych on USA. Oh, did he? Top tight lister. Yeah. Special Ventura. appearance by Jesse Ventura. Yeah, it looks like we're queued up nice then. Rip, brother, dude! <laughs> oh, here he comes. They probably filmed this right on top of WWE events, huh? Of course they did, yeah. That was what they did. They filmed yeah. this, like, they right after us. Kids, as you see Hogan coming out. Hulk up, brother, dude. This is Ripper, brother, dude. Oh, yeah, look at that. World Wrestling Federation. Jeez. <laughs> I remember in um, WWE 2K14, you could get Rip downloaded. As a special character. <laughs> Music by Jim Johnston. That's right. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> Jesus. Rip. Rip them, brother. Rip them. He was definitely on something back then. Christ. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Jays. <laughs> did, did you notice in between this... Like, you, it, it's amazing. If you watch Hulk Hogan in 1988 and 1989... And then you watch him in 92, 93, 94. Oh, there's such a notorious drop-off as far as body quality. Because, you know, he may or may not, you know, because that was when the feds started to circle around. 
Exactly. Iron Mike Sharp, Vince Canada's McMahon favorite. Hulk Hogan. Oh, Jesus. Iron, My Iron Mike Sharp, Canada's greatest athlete. That was his gimmick. I'm not saying it is. Boy, they must say they must say given people like some blue and white shirts for right. Do like, you think they must oh, have? They had to have. Everyone must have had to have turned it up. Oh, there's a big empty crowd back there. Uh, look at all the empty seats uh. back there. Jeez, <laughs> they, they must have had to uh, turn in all our Hulk shirts so they didn't break the frickin' fourth wall. Probably <laughs> shot this at like three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, with the kids <laughs> and everything there. Jeez. Well, this is pr this is definitely. This is either shot after like it. Well, you know how those uh, those TV tapings back in the day they yeah. wouldn't get out until one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, because they would shoot like ten shows in a night. They probably all film this in one take though, right here. They probably just let them just wrestle an actual match and tape it. Yeah, <laughs> and then they just had the multi-camera thing. Yeah. Oh boy. The guy on the right there in the blue tie, that's the guy that was the lawyer in uh, Vice City. Yes. He's been on a couple of things, too. Like, I've seen him in other stuff other than this. He's actually had a better career than, like, Kurt Fuller. Because Kurt Fuller, I've only seen in, like, maybe five or six things. Scary movie. <laughs> uh, Ghostbusters 2, Wayne's World. Yeah, that's right, uh, Wayne's World. I think he was in that show, That's My Bush, on Comedy Central, which was around <laughs> for, like, less than six months. Yeah, it didn't last too long. Brother! Dude! Brother! Oh, yeah, I remember him in Anger Management. Oh, yeah, he was in Anger Management, that's right. Adam Sandler's boss. <laughs> Where, like... With I, I thought it was Click for that. a second, but then I was like, oh, wait, that was David Hasselhoff. <laughs> Oh, no, brother. Brother! <laughs> brother! You know, go brother! Ahead. It's amazing how much... It's, it's amazing brother. how much... It's amazing how much Mr. America, Hulk Hogan, and Rip were all exactly alike, though. Oh, they had to, oh it was like a... That was like a Smackdown... Uh, Smackdown shut your mouth type uh, camera angle there with the multiple ones and the big boot. Yeah, right. Oh. <laughs> Stupid double axe handle. How was his finish? That was worse than a, that's the worst of a leg drop. <laughs> this movie, a leg drop. At least he did the leg drop on like Rocky Balboa. This movie scored an amazing oh, 4.4 4, 4 out of 10 on Internet Movie Database with a 31 Metacritic. That's actually not, that's not terrible. Like I thought it was going to be like the threes and the twos. Yeah, that's true. The fours, that's more than I expected. All right. Oh, that uh the guy yeah, the guy that you're talking about, the blue tie, I've seen him before. <laughs> I heard Dave Meltzer gave this zero out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> I mean he wouldn't rate uh money in the bank ladder match, so why would he bother going rank this? He's a pompous ass. Maybe the Solid Monster. Solid Monster has probably never seen this movie either. <laughs> I'm Solid Monster, and this movie is I'm terrible. I'm Solid Monster. It is awful. Hey, rest in peace, Howard Finkel. Yeah, right. Yeah. World Wrestling Federation kids. Oh, with their WrestleMania four shirts. <laughs> he, Hogan used to did wear white tights um, back in the early days of him and the Federation. 84 and 85, he yeah. did wear white tights. So this is actually, well, 86, though, uh, for a time. He also wore blue. He didn't switch over to the yellow full-time, I think, until probably like 80, late 86, early 87. So him in the white, I mean, that's not unheard of. That blonde kid that was his manager in this movie, he seems like some generic character. It would be like in storyline mode or something. <laughs> he does, yeah. <laughs> it's it's he was that marine guy it's, it's that was jump. in the. Yeah. I, he, he was in that marine character that they yeah. had in one of those Smackdowns that year. His name is Jeff. <laughs> he just Jeff. Said, 
What a prophetic storyline this is, though, in this movie. It's basically like, this is basically WCW <laughs> right here in Georgia. It really is. <laughs> Except Kurt Fuller is, but Kurt Fuller, I don't know, Fair. he's like a combination of Bischoff and yep. Bill Watts. Yep. <laughs> this lady's fearing for her job. Of course she is. Apologize. <laughs> well, somebody's right on cue with me. That audio is exactly on spot with mine. No kidding. Throw her out the window. Yeah, yeah RoboCop style. <laughs> Back Shrek. Back Shrek. Yep. Just throw it out the window. Oh, you know what this is? This is uh, gender discrimination in the workplace right there. That's it. Yeah. Different time, folks. This is 1989, so I don't want to hear any shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ordway. I still love the, um, the primetime special they did for this. Where it's like the premiere of No Holds Barred, Gorilla Bud Zoo just sit there. He's like, Well, you know, this movie opened this weekend, I'm sure, shattering box office worldwide record. I'm like, No, it didn't. No, it didn't, Gorilla. Stop overselling. Yeah. This is literally this is literally Luke Harper's interp or Birdie Lee's interpretation of how WWE <laughs> operates. <laughs> <laughs> you may not eat. Well, I am Kurt, Kurt Fuller, the number one contender for the AEW championship. Yeah. You know you're struggling, though, when Kurt Fuller is the second biggest star in your movie. Yeah, you know you're hard. <laughs> we so have... does, um, why, why couldn't they have one of the executives sneeze and get have, make Kurt Fuller get mad about yep. it? Oh! You think, you think Vince sat there and was like, ah, he's got to be an asshole like me. <laughs> Kurt, you're perfect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's got to go, well, goddamn, pal, you got to... If only we had, like, uh, Jim Cornette in this, too. <laughs> Actually, if this was done, if this was done in 1999, Vince would have been playing himself, and yeah. then you would have had... <laughs> Cornette should have been in this. <laughs> God damn! <laughs> Actually, that's Jim Cornette right there on the right. <laughs> so, Mr. Hogan is here. We're basically Mystery Science 3000-ing the shit out of this movie. No, right no now. I, really I can see this right now. It deserves it. I can see this right now. Hogan's with McMahon, with Pritchard, and Cornette right there. Yeah. Uh, that's true. And Pritchard... <laughs> Pritchard <laughs> We're going up to the Hamptons for the weekend, Hulk. You should come with me and Monsoon and Cornette and Jack Tunney. <laughs> <laughs> it's Hulk Hogan meets Weekend at Bernie's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fruit I'd juice? Like to, no, but I'd like some juicy fruit, brother. <laughs> brother. I'd like freaking chairs. Cute, brother. <laughs> Look at these gold chairs. That is the most ridiculous office I've ever seen. Yep. Like, the furniture, like, I would not... I would be like, I don't even want to do business with you. <laughs> why, why would he be negotiating with Hulk Hogan to be on his network? Is he, what is he trying to get... Is he trying to get wrestling exactly. on his network? Or is he trying to get Hulk Hogan well, in, like, a show on his network? Well, I mean, you know that he's a... I mean, he's an independent contractor, so he can do what he wants. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if this was in real life, though, if he took a meeting and then Vince hears about it, he's just like, what the fuck are you doing, Terry? <laughs> it's a blank. This is also a blank check as well, this movie. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, brother, by the time you're done here, after I get done suing you, you'll be the frickin' mayor's assistant in Ghostbusters too, brother. Oh my god. Actually, you know, he probably made these movies back to back because this and Ghostbusters 2 were both released in 89. Came out in the same summer. This is so awesome. Oh, he got some performance. Jeez. He has a way with people, doesn't he? Ghostbusters, I gotta give him credit, though. It was a very subtle performance. Like, it wasn't. He didn't go over the top like this. This, though, he goes full, like, 11. Yeah. 
I guess originally the name was No Over the Top, but then they changed it to No Holds Barred. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the next movie we do now. <laughs> it's a movie about a child custody battle and arm wrestling. <laughs> Ooh, I gotta get my son back and win this arm wrestling battle. Jesus Christ. This is my brother, dude. Charlie Wilcox's brother. Charlie Wilcox's brother. Wonder if this check plate's any good. The Stooges. They even have the frickin' Stooges in this movie. Goddamn! <laughs> Patterson and Briscoe over there. What's this, uh, Parkway and frickin' Franklin Mouse right here? Jeez. <laughs> Forge Valley Parkway? Jeez. Where's this limo going, dude? He actually gets back in the limo after the stun he just pulled in the office. Wouldn't you call an Uber? Oh, wait, I forgot to say that to you. You're going the wa- wrong way, bro. What the hell is this dude? What is this dude? You know, if it, Paul Heyman had been more aggressive like this, ACW would have lasted longer. <laughs> This is actually how. This is actual footage of how Ted Turner got uh, Hulk Hogan to sign with WCW. Yeah, it's, it's exactly <laughs> it. Yeah, it's, it's actual footage. This is a freaking kidnapping right now, for goodness sake. This really is. It's, it's, it's an abduction. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's no way he could do that with his foot. I'm surprised he punched punch the roof glass. The punch the roof glass, Hulkster. Right, There's no it. way that him kicking like this is doing that to the car. Okay, what there's the no hell? way that's possible. They went from like a why business... is he losing control? Oh, Look at this. God. They went from like an uppity business district to like a third rate uh, neighborhood here. Look at this. All in a matter of two uh, minutes. It's Worcester. I mean, you know. <laughs> 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 oh shit! I'm in Maine South. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, this is all a true story. This movie just <laughs> this really happened right here. Hey, remember that oh, that was a like, remember, there was a time where Hogan was kidnapped uh, in order to start <laughs> the company. Oh, and you all want to know where uh, they end up getting the limousine repaired at the Briscoes Body Shop? Yeah. <laughs> if not there, then the pan spray. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Oh, yeah, see, he should have done that while the car was driving. Oh, sure, now he finally breaks out. Jesus. He just did the Ninja Turtles 2 entrance right there with Michelangelo. You look like Rey Mysterio right there. Yeah, right. Look who's <laughs> out this guy, R-E-Y. <laughs> this is like Streets of Rage now. You know, the problem is, is you know, these union guys are going to be really pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we know sold the pipe. Yeah. What an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> you know the limo driver's gonna get destroyed here in a minute. He missed that punch there. What a work <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turn on Mustafa and Iron Sheik, dude. <laughs> so I take it I take it these guys won't be signed by AEW anytime no. soon, right? No. If Cody Rhodes any ideas, he might actually sign him, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. Press slam! Oh. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh. No cell. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's that man. <laughs> Please, Mr. Hogan, no, I love you. I, I like Rip. <laughs> Get him, Six! Get him! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> send, an, send an Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> Spinning heel kick by Xbox. All right, he really wants to. <laughs> Why don't you just drive away, dude? He had all this time to go away. I am mean, just a limo driver. Apparently, what from what I understand was that originally Hogan was going to be in this, but he actually backed out, and then Macho Man got the lead role, and then he oh, said, God. "Oh no, I don't think." No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> What's that smell? <laughs> This scene is actually hilarious. (laughs) (laughs) He should have got an Oscar for that scene alone. (laughs) 
sexual prepare to be sir prepare to be sexually harassed brother i mean what? <laughs> she's kind of got a mandy rose facial structure a little bit not much <laughs> i always felt like they could have got somebody hotter for this like, you know, like, you can get, like, Shannon Tweed or, like, a Playboy bunny or something <laughs> with this broad. Late 80s, not late 90s, Dad. <laughs> hey, come on. Look at Hogan. Come on. You think Hogan, Hogan should have been done on the casting? He should have been like, nah, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> look, look at this. Look, 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 what is he doing here? What is he doing right there? What's just this? in the middle of a goddamn, like, marketing meeting, he's just. I fucking the shit out of her, and just <laughs> he's, already, he's already envisioning them walking out on the beach together at like sunset. Yes, he is. <laughs> They've already been married in his head. They're already married. They already got three kids in a skull right now. Oh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on uh, marriage <laughs> and kids. Yeah. Whoa, yeah, what was he, that? He Sorry, to inject her with the roids. <laughs> Listen, I mean, Nancy you know to, Kerrigan. Do you, know, do you know how to do anabolic injections? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I mean, Nancy Kerrigan. <laughs> oh, shit. That is, that's a point, Nancy Kerrigan. <laughs> I just gonna attack my people with lead pipes, and you're going to know all about that in about five years, dude. Very professional. Unlike, unlike me, I wouldn't job out in the fucking Olympics, brother. <laughs> Oksana Bayul, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Russians. <laughs> I kicked the key. I kicked Nikolai's ass. You couldn't even beat Oksana Bayul. What the yeah, fuck, no, no. brother? <laughs> okay, I need to what do a right guard. I need to do a church or a restaurant. I need to oh do my. a right guard uh, commercial here in about two <laughs> seconds. <so. laughs> why is Tom Johnson why or Hulk Hogan? Hogan? Why yeah. does Hogan look like he's going to be in Miami Vice? Yeah, right. <laughs> Just see, I see Sonny Crockett running in and being like, Hulk, I need you. All right. <laughs> Is this before or after Labor Day? With that white <laughs> <laughs> Hey, easy there, bro. That's Hogan's girl. Get out of here. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Get out of here. Get out of here, you <laughs> peasant. Serve the water to you're table a, 19. You're in a, if you're in a French restaurant, if you're in a French restaurant, you better call him. Le Champion! <laughs> Le Champion. Wee <laughs> wee. Oui, oui. hey, 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 you know what you have at the French restaurant? A little bit Le of the bubbly. Water, hey. It's a little classy for the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you get out of my face, Charlie Wilcox? <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the champion. I don't do job to French people, all right? Look what I did to Bret Hart. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's Shemp Ramsey, brother. <laughs> that's next. Come on, get Hogan a little bit of the bubbly, please. Oh, ad break. Uh, here we go. Three, two. That guy looks like Mike Myers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Brother, <laughs> Roadhouse. Now it's Roadhouse. This is Roadhouse too. <laughs> Dalton. <laughs> what the hell is Dalton and Samuel Elliott? The name. Hey, did you get? Dalton. Did you get an ad break? No. Oh, I got an ad break. All right, we'll pause. I got an ad break. I did not get an ad break. I got an ad break. You better put it on pause. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me just. Uh, yeah, goddamn, pal. See. I don't want to pause mine because I want to see if it's going to hit the ad break. That way we don't go to my ad break. All right, right. I'll pause at uh, 
Let me rewind here. I'll go back 30 seconds. 2207. Freaking ad breaks. What the hell ad breaks? Yeah, let's let me know when you guys are ready. All at the bar, yeah. Cody, stop purring so loud. Stop, stop trying to get on the uh, show every week. <laughs> well, just like you were just like another Cody I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cody, stop booking yourself as champion, all right? Stop, stop putting your, booking yourself as champ, Cody. <laughs> Sick of your shit. Yeah. Still ads playing for you guys? No, I'm at the... I Mine ended. Okay. 2207. Uh, I, got, I got one more ad. Okay. Get it to where that guy in the, the white shirt and the black vest holding the beer in his left hand with the tattoo with the face on his shoulder. Get it to that. Yeah, point. I'm at that point. Okay, good. All right, perfect. Give Pause me that it. specific time. 2207. Yeah. 2207? Yeah, there should yeah. be some guy with like a, a some kind of backwards hat with a beard, white beard and tattoos and a black vest and a beer at 2207. Once I get hit play, watch my okay, play. I'm back in the movie now. All right. Okay. Oh, you just need to queue back up to the time you're saying? As soon as we hit play, mine will go to a commercial. Okay, I'm at 2207. And you see that guy there with the black vest? Yep. All right, ready? One, two, three, go. All right. Now he's walking. Now he's walking past yep. those tires mm-hmm. in the background. Yeah. The green Mine green are kind yellow. of plays. What? <laughs> What's that, Dan? My kind of joints. Oh, okay. I thought you said your account froze. I'm like, what the hell? No, I'm like, no, my kind of plays, I think. Yeah. Do you think the guy in the black vest back there is like the boss in this place? Yeah. We are offering money to people here. <laughs> This is such a Vince McMahon move right here. Let's go to the local bar and meet some people here. Let's wear our oh my. I, I can get along better with that. the biting the ear. Oh, see that punch? Oh, damn. That's the Sandman's dad back there. <laughs> hey, Ronda Rousey's mom. <laughs> You're not a man. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Are you looking for the cake bar? It's 1989, folks. <laughs> <laughs> that other guy's like, "Are you coming or not?" No, I was like, "He was like, I was waiting for instructions to the gay bar." <laughs> They're hurting each other. They're really hurting each other. I mean, I'm sure the beer there would be cheap. <laughs> Stan Hansen. Make it a couple. <laughs> make it a couple boiler makers. I'd be like, can I get a pitcher of Miller Lite and just leave the pitcher? Yeah. <laughs> these guys have no work rate. These are just these are just club fighters. Are all these guys? Are. No, there is no work rate whatsoever. No, they're they're big on the independent scene. Then AEW will sign them. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> these some fans online, and just all of a sudden, they're like, "Oh, why are these guys pushed? Because they all they could do is punch." <laughs> yeah. One guy tried to Mike Tyson, uh, Devander Holyfield, over there for a second. Is that Jim Duggan? Yeah. No, Stan Hansen. <laughs> Sir, you're too darn loud. I'm JBL. That's Stan Hansen, my favorite wrestler. Hansen just goes in there and just takes each one of their eyes out. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. <laughs> you guys might be a little bit behind me, I think. Why, where are you at right now? Uh, the guy's talking back and forth. Dan reacted. Dan laughed like a second or two later than mine. Was no, gone. I laughed when he spit his goddamn stuff on his stomach. That's what I mean. You laughed two yeah. seconds later than mine played it. Yeah. Them's the only rules. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah. table broke. Yep. Yeah, I'm yep. right with you. 
I'm right there. All right. This guy up here. Hornswoggle. That's that one of the Bashads, I think. Is that Hornswoggle? Hornswoggle's dad. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> the joke. Dan Hansen, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> He's literally kicking his ass. Oh, he is. <laughs> I mean, like, can you honestly go to a, a place like this, though? Like, honestly, this is... Yeah. I don't know. There's no such place. In the, there's no such place in America. No. There's no. They don't do this anymore. Ah, now the broad's beating up the. Huh, what the hell? <laughs> Very fair fight, huh? That other guy just got punched there goes by the guy. Table. Yeah. He oversold like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, the kegger. Uh oh. Now it's getting real. Oh boy. Oh boy. Did he just oh, shot at a ke Oh my god. <laughs> Stone Cold couldn't do that. No, it isn't. It's fantastic. <laughs> this is not reality. Neither is wrestling. <laughs> this guy's drinking like half the keg already. <laughs> All of a sudden, he's just like, you! <laughs> Are you sure you want to use the bathroom in this place? <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. definitely wouldn't. It's probably one of those places that has, like, one stall only. And there's, like, a line outside the frickin' door. That's I bet he has a trough, like Fenway Park, for a yeah. pisser. That's right, for years, Fenway Park had a trough for a pisser, folks. So the urinal, it was just a trough. There's like a brawl everywhere. Hmm. <laughs> That's not proper social distancing, especially considering that guy was like... <laughs> yeah. Oh, VD room. Uh, they, need, they need to leave this place here. <laughs> we need to get out of there. Wash your hands. I would oh, rather go. I would rather go into the slaughterhouse in Texas oh. Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, I told you. Oh. I told you. Oh. Troughs. <laughs> oh my god. I would just piss outside. Like at this yeah, point, I, like I, I just too. take the fucking risk. Fuck it, I'm going outside. Might as well piss on the floor at this point. Cause I don't it might as well. Room. It's cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> Why is there a dog in the piss house? <laughs> Shut the fuck up before I dunk your head in this freaking trough. It's Shawn Michaels. He just comes out and super kicks him. <laughs> You guys, can, you guys can space out the opposite ends of this thing if you want. You don't have to. Yeah, uh, you guys are the... right next to each other. <laughs> They're AEW fans. they got to be peeing right next to each other. <laughs> this is the creepiest. This is, this is probably, I'm just beside myself right now how creepy this scene is. That <laughs> fucking bathroom is terrible. What? Someone's ripping it. <laughs> Jimmy Swag. It's not me. <laughs> It's not, it's, it's not me doing bong hits, let me tell you. Oh my god. Why is Stan hits? Oh, come on, really? There's only three working stalls. Prepare to drink from the trough. Ah! <laughs> I would have rather been killed. Just shoot me. Oh my god. I can't why, are you at the, why are you looking at them? <laughs> oh, <geez>. oh my god. <laughs> okay. Okay. Just leave. Just get the fuck out of there. Why did any why would you stay there? Like why would anybody want to go there? 
Oh, God. Jeez. <laughs> I wonder if this is how Dana White just decided, oh, well, I want to be like Kurt Fuller and No Holds Barred. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to run my company. <laughs> I think that's a because to be quite honest, as far as promoters go, he reminds me more of Kurt Fuller than anybody else. Because he'll just look at you and be like, one day you're his best friend, and then the next day he thinks you're the biggest asshole on the planet. Yep. Jeez. This kind of feels like the Running Man a little bit too, right now. Yeah. Over the top, oh, that is the true. Running Man. Yeah. yeah. Every. <laughs> I actually have enjoyed the Running Man. Yeah, it's movie. good. The Running Man's excellent. Jesse Ventura is great in that, too. The, the two main characters Dr. in that movie, Freedom. Uh, Schwarzenegger and the lady, another lady, they were both in Predator or Predator 2. She was in Predator 2. He was in Predator. Oh, the lead? I didn't know that. Yeah, that woman, she was, oh. Danny, she was in Danny Glover's police crew in that movie, yeah. Oh, oh shit, wow. yeah. Yep. That does make sense now. Yep. Oh, my God, it's Otis with hair. Right. <laughs> the Necro Butcher. <laughs> the necro butcher. Yeah. The necro jo butcher, Joe Exotic. All right, you fight this guy here. Nice teeth, lady. Oh my god! Someone get Isaac Yankum. <laughs> Well, you can't fix stupid. That's the problem in summer. <laughs> God, this fucking guy is he is pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> Ring announcing, announcing. The Battle of the Tough Guys is also a weak name. Yeah, it's tough. It's, as generic. Up as, it, it's, it's so generic. It's as generic as World Television Network, in fact. That's true. Oh, wait, they're actually going back to that same bar. Okay. All right. Well, why not? Yeah. It's, it's cheap to... It, the problem is, I don't know how you're going to curtain and drape that shithole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. I wonder how much you were... How much were you paying for those table seats? I mean, were, the, were they involved in the couple charge? Right. It's probably 30 bucks, and you can drink all night long for free. <laughs> yeah. Bye-bye, DDP. And he has been eliminated. It's a disqualification because he threw him over the top rope. Yeah. He goes on to the next round. Debo. What? <gasps> Basically, Mr. T and Ivan Drago in the form of Debo. Jeez. All right, well, there goes your gimmick because you had the eye patch on. Now you lift it to see it. <laughs> yep. Well, he killed Kayfabe. Yeah, he killed Kayfabe. Kayfabe! Kayfabe! <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, oh, bitch. This, this, this <laughs> oh, my God. I was quoting uh, uh, The Last Dragon there. <laughs> She's fine. Yeah. <laughs> and he just starts smiling. Ah, all right. <laughs> I'm going to kill everybody. Oh, my God. Look at this dude. I, I mean, he did look like a million bucks. So I got to give him that. Yeah. It's just... So, what do you think? When he walked in, do you think he got himself over? Oh, much over. Oh, yeah. No, he was, by looks alone, he was over. It was just the fact that when he got in the ring, people were like, oh, well. <laughs> the fans like, then after the movie, let's have him actually face Hogan in real life. Yeah, exactly. 
We'll book it for SummerSlam and Survivor Series. <laughs> and then we're going to, and to make some more money with this movie, we're going to do the movie and the match around Christmas. <laughs> and we're going to make him pay $20 to see a steel cage match and the movie. Yeah. It's exactly what they did. <laughs> he's like, he's, he's killing six people at once here. It's like when Psycho said you have to face two jobbers on su superstars every week. <laughs> God, I loved it. I loved it when he used to put people on the stretchers and then throw them like like a jet that roll them like just throw them careening into stuff on the stretchers. <laughs> Sid was great at that. Mm -hmm. What's this? The house from freaking step by step? Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and Ricky Schroeder and Silver Spoons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ricky Schroeder references are always. <laughs> I'm Stan Hansen. Get off me, Stan Hansen. Oh, so I had to. I had to look up. Um, you know the this tough guy right here. Um, what's his? Um, Zeus. Tony Zeus. Lopez Jr. And so. Of course, he was in The Dark Knight where he's on the boat yeah. and he's like, I, I'm going to do something you should have done a long time ago. He's also the president of Fifth Element. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I was watching that today, by the way. That was on TV this afternoon on Sci-Fi. Multipass. Lilo Dallas Multipass. She knows it's a Multipass. Logan's like, I'm gonna have Bruce to Willis was so great in that film, and he didn't even do much. Yeah. <laughs> Fuji was in that movie. He had a cameo. The guy played Fuji in the movie Who's the Man? You probably don't, I don't know if you remember that movie, Who's the Man. But uh, what? He was the same guy that was one of the forefathers in uh, Lethal Weapon 4. He was the traveling oh, yeah, uh, yeah, vendor yeah. there, food vendor. Yeah. yeah, That's a random reference for you right there. Oh, he took his hair? Oh, Jesus. I didn't know it was a hair versus hair match. Yeah, I think that's... That wasn't a gimmick. You didn't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the <a> finish. <laughs> you know, technically, he didn't even sign paperwork. Like, how are you no. going to... He's going to give him the title? Yep. Oh, I'm going to be having a uh, commercial break here in a second. Oh, right, uh, yeah, it's coming up for me, too. Four, three, three two, two, one, brother. one okay. and ad break. Okay. All right, that's good. Hopefully we get the same amount of commercials here. I got one of four ads here coming up. You guys got the same? I got one of four also. Okay. I got one of three. Oh, jeez, what the hell? Oh, son of a bitch. Ah. You know who's hitting the pause button once they... Uh... <laughs> Unless Dan gets, unless Dan's is distributed over the same amount of time, where he got three. Unless I get time. like a minute, unless I get one one minute and then two thirty seconds or something, yeah. who knows? I could just put this on my. Bl I have this movie on Blu-ray. I could just play that. Which again, there's probably someone out there that's like, "You own this fucking piece of shit on yeah, Blu-ray?" Exactly. Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of sick bastard owns this on Blu-ray? <laughs> 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 what kind of sick bitch takes the ice cubes out of the freeze trays? <laughs> Do you get that reference? Yes. True lies. <laughs> she took the ice cube trays out of the ice cube tray. Ice cubes out of the ice cube tray. <laughs> Tom Arnold was so great in True Lies. Oh, man. It's one of the best. Probably one of the best co stars. Where's the damn page? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm up to uh, going to four to four here in a second, and now I'm on. But not with these fucking commercials, these goddamn insurance commercials. I don't know at home. Who cares? I, I got a dog. <laughs> I got a dog commercial. I got progressive. All right. Which I'm not. I don't know why they're showing me. It. <laughs> All right, now I'm on ad four. Son of a bitch. All right, I paused it. I'm at. Uh, I'm at thirty-eight, thirty-three. All right, I'm about to, my ad's about done here. Ex-con Zeus thriller are killer. Uh, yeah, okay. stop, yeah, stop right on that newspaper. Yeah, uh, 3833, Dan, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, 3833? 
Yeah, Eric? He's just going to play his last ad still. Yeah. Yeah, again, damn advanced auto parts. They're giving Nevada a hard time with the 2B uh, broadcast. Well, I hate Cox. Okay, let's see. Whoops, hold on. Okay, I'm ready. 38-33? Yeah. I just went off a few seconds, but I'm um, 38-36, yeah. Okay. Um, all right, let's just play. We'll, we'll, me and Dan will catch up to 38-36 and then hit play, uh, pause again. All right. All right, now I'm at 3836. All right, Dan, just pause on 3836. Yeah, I'm there. Okay. And you have the guy's head on the left and then the newspaper on the right with the copy cup? Yeah. Right? Okay. All right, let's hit play on one, two, three, go. There we go. All right. Everybody's reading the newspaper. Okay. Ex con Zeus. Yeah. Thriller or killer? Yeah. Killer cross? Yeah, right. We are kicking ass. <laughs> Where's our demos? Yeah, yeah. 18 to 49, we're kicking ass in. <laughs> he acts a lot like Vince McMahon in this movie. You can tell by that body language. <laughs> Why the hell are you watching if you're They watched it, a didn't they? <laughs> this is how Vince handled the parent the parent te ter television council in the late right, 90s. Right, right. They watched <laughs> it, didn't they? Yeah. Goddamn pal. <laughs> this was basically the intro to Raw in 1998 right here. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Da -da 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 -da. Oh jeez, Otis Otis Sr. <laughs> the industrial arena. Rah, 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 rah. Oh, here he comes. <laughs> I feel like a Scott Steiner uh, metal uh, instead of Scott Steiner. <laughs> 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 It's a actually, bicycle shade. Triple H used to do that for a little while there at uh, SummerSlam. Yeah, you're right, he did. Yeah. He kind of yep. got rid of it quick, but he did. Oh, yeah, I remember that. The leather pants with the... Ah, uh, Jesus. Yeah. Put the sledgehammer down. That's right, he actually used his, his gimmick in this movie was his gimmick in WWE, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's using a weapon, for goodness sakes. I mean, that's not cheating. I mean, if Zeus came back with a gun, would that not be cheating, too? Zeus grabs a well, shotgun, it, pumps it. It would, probably, it would probably be against his parole. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> You're using a gun. <laughs> I don't even think, like, why is he even fighting in this thing right now, considering the fact that he is on parole? He right. just got out of goddamn prison. <laughs> if I was the person, I'd be the parole officer. I'd be like, why the fuck is he in fights? <laughs> <laughs> what is going on here? Debo, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are not the fuck out. The Stooges, Vince McMahon, and the Stooges were basically uh, invented right in this movie. Yeah, if you called, if you told Cornette that he looked like one of those guys in this movie, he would never <laughs> fucking talk to you again. No. Oh, I can't believe I, upon you. I look like that guy that was a lawyer. Hey, what, the fuck are, what do you think you're doing? Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't kiss Vince McMahon's ass if you paid me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to manage the superstars so I want to. <laughs> I wouldn't marry Zeus, that big motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. It's the Yeti! <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey's like, you win! He's like, it's not over yet! Shut up! What do you mean, winner? I haven't even won yet. I'm going to beat this crap out of this guy for the next five minutes. I think he's dead now. I think that's murder. Uh, uh, he's, he's burning on the floor. This movie really should have been called Over the Top, Dan. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, it's really nuts. Nancy Kerrigan. <laughs> I 
I haven't seen this movie in a couple of years. I think I've only seen this movie a few times. This is this has been I this is I haven't seen this in at least fifteen years, maybe oh, longer. Geez. Yeah, I think I've seen it somewhere. I don't know. I've seen it once this century. I can guarantee you that, but I can't remember. Johnny Lawrence that. and his brother. Yeah. yeah sure. <laughs> in a burning hot. That's what needs to be playing right now. <laughs> All of a sudden, the first thing the jet guy guy comes off the jet, it's Ric Flair. He's like, Woo! Get the fuck off my plane, Hogan! Woo! <laughs> yeah, they don't do enough cameos in this movie. That's another thing they should have. They should have cameos all throughout this movie. In a burning hot. Oh, the slash of the statue waitress. This waitress is serving them meat two and two and three. It wasn't called a meat and three. Ryan Pixie. Is this movie sponsored? Like, that sounds like the damn Bee Gees. Oh, I'll tell you right now, give me some Hulk Hogan. <laughs> I wonder if she's still. I wonder if she was still around to hear certain tapes. Hogan Black. <laughs> I told you you better marry me because I'm. Oh, she's a robbery. Oh, oh great! God. Well, I just came back to complain. Go ahead, make my day, brother. You pick of all restaurants, the one where Hulk Hogan's in. I'd be more worried about the sexy black woman than I would Hulk Hogan. <laughs> All of, a sudden, all of a sudden, Hulk Hogan gets like six feet. <laughs> he, almost, he just ripped the stool off and hit him in the face with it. All of a sudden, Hulk Hogan gets like six people killed in this place because of his actions. <laughs> there ain't nobody upstairs! <laughs> but there ain't nobody upstairs, brother! Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I've been working out. I'm sorry about the damage, but is this good enough? Oh, I bet you'd be hit that oh. lady. There's so many ways this could go wrong in real life if someone had done this in real life. Brother, he's dead. He's down. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was unnecessary. <laughs> Okay, so he had to squash it. He does a, he does a right? shit pose. It's not a wrestling match in real life. It was a hostage situation, you asshole. <laughs> not a fucking work. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, like whoa, 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 what, all of a sudden, in the You're meantime, man. in the meantime, these robbers are getting their guns back and they start shooting left and right. <laughs> <laughs> They're talking about dropping your guard. I think that one guy was Velveteen Dream right there. <laughs> now Nancy Kerrigan's just like, oh. She's oh, like, geez, goddamn, not this, scene. not this scene. Please, not this. Scene. <laughs> I'll sleep on the couch. Oh. All right. Oh, only one bed, brother. Come on, it's obvious you want to fuck him. Just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 20, 20 bucks says uh, Hogan canceled the reservation just to make uh Make sure it's one bed, brother. Yep, yep, <laughs> one bed, brother. That only works for me, brother. Look at this. Oh, jeez. Just don't go in my bag, all right? Why? What's in there? Oh, nothing. Like 600 milligrams of... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he created a divider. No shiz. Oh, look at that. The thing about it is, I thought that... I, she, I wonder if she's worried about the razor blades that might be in the tape. Oh, shit. Wait. <laughs> right, <exactly. laughs> Tricks of the trade. <laughs> <laughs> This is one of the stupidest things I've ever seen. In my it life. is so dumb. It's so bad. It's like, they, just, they just go back and forth listening to the door. It's like, what are you doing? Using mouthwash. 
Why does that part need to be needed in the movie? Yeah, exactly. there's, no, there's no need for this. None. Still not as bad as the bathroom scene though at the bar though earlier. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh. The freaking man's gonna choke. <laughs> you got it, brother. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> His fucking arms. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh, he really is. <laughs> There's someone in the background. There's someone in the background. This is so cheesy. Yeah, it is, yeah. This, yeah, this looks like good, like, 80s B-movie cam. Oh, yeah, no. It's like... What? what are, are they, do they have a Medusa? Like, what is that? Like, H- Hogan, Hogan created this divider to divide it up because they have to share this a bed. This is great, Dan, right but now. You know this is happen. so great. <laughs> what is this? I don't know. <laughs> what are you watching right now? I don't know. It's, it's, it's uh, WWE. <laughs> Look at Hogan, he's willing to hear our thoughts and feelings. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Hulk Hogan, no, Hulk, Hogan Hogan Tell me your thoughts, brother. Yeah. Let's get lonely, brother. You know I make right guard commercials. <laughs> <laughs> One day I hope to make a Thunder in Paradise TV show. So Vince wants me to put over this guy named Hellwig at, at uh, six. I don't know if it's a good idea, dude. <laughs> of all things to wake up to. Where I am. Besides, doesn't Hogan make that the big been bucks? Like, Why fuck, couldn't he get a better fuck. hotel? What is going on now? What is this? What is he doing? Do I want to know? What? <laughs> what does he use the chair? What does he use the chair over there instead? To, to yeah. Why is he using the bed and bothering her at the same time? Yeah. How Jeez. dare him? How dare he? Hogan only works best for him. So. He used a freaking chair instead. You on on uh, oh, what's a good word here? Uh, inconsiderate ass. <laughs> he wins considerate ass. There is inconsiderate ass. <laughs> Sammy Guevara. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy Guevara is an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't got one eye out of wrestling talent. I was working in AEW five years ago, and they told me, put over Sammy Guevara. I go, but that kid's an asshole. <laughs> I'm looking away from the screen right now, just FYI. I just can't, I just can't take this. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, surprise. That was the biggest bump he's taken in years. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh shit! Hogan going deep on that one. You yeah. built walls that I ever could, brother. <laughs> to go put over Flash. Macho Man. There's a couch that has a better sense of humor than you do? What the <laughs> hell? No doubt they're going to end up as a couple by the end of this freaking movie. <laughs> Oh, this bitch. <laughs> she was working the whole time for him. You allowed him to use a divider. <laughs> you fell for Hulk. <laughs> I think this is how this is how Vince this is how Vince talked to Becky on oh. Monday. <laughs> you said he's a really nice guy. Yes, you told me that you failed the suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. He just assaulted he, that woman. 
He had to have been on coke during this movie. Oh, he sure. had to have been. <laughs> <laughs> I was working with him the whole time, but I wanted to know I, I love you. Even though I was working against you, I love you. Oh, my <laughs> God. He hit you. It's probably another underhanded tactic. So is she like a Mark Henry big show where she's going to turn <laughs> baby face heel? Baby oh, face, Jesus. Like, so many times in this movie. <laughs> I fell in love with you, even though you're a complete asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that you love me more than you love the macho man. <laughs> Tell me that I'm a more technical wrestler than Hellwick. <laughs> Tell me, say, t- say the Bret Hart's not my league. Oh yeah, brother. <laughs> Tell me, I'm better than Ric Flair, brother. Why the fuck would he have a like a statue like that in his house? I don't know. Come on, Hulk. You're not some thespian. <laughs> I mean, they don't have terrible chemistry, but they don't have great chemistry either. I wouldn't suggest having Hulk Hogan have a romantic relationship. It just looks weird on screen. It's like it does. That's why they didn't do it for like Suburban Commando. Right, exactly. (laughs) I am here with Debo. That's Debo, brother. He's killed six people that he only had to knock out. <laughs> Basically the plot of Rocky Three now. Oh, crucified. Actually, you know, you know what would be really terrifying is if it wasn't Zeus, if it was New Jack, and it was New Jack <laughs> against Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fucking terrifying. Ad starting in seven seconds. New Jack. Five, four. Bitch, I'm gonna stab you like a motherfucker. And we got an ad break. Dan, did you just go to an ad? Ad break. Fuck. One of two. I got one. Oh, of the one. dog and the ball. You know, mine skipped oh, skip yeah. an ad. Mine skipped the ad. We continued with the movie. What are you guys doing? What's yours doing? Mine's mine Geico. Yeah, mine skipped the ads altogether awkwardly. Just, uh, yeah, no. I'm, I'm on. Uh, fuck. Let me know when you guys get to 55 27. 55 27. Rip, <laughs> rip him, brother. And he does like the rip hand signal. He's like, rip him. <laughs> well, the rip hand, the rip hand signal is isn't that like the Samoan sign, anyways? Yeah, it is basically. Yeah. You said fifty five twenty seven. That's it. Yep, we're Hogan's okay, like, down. Bet. Yep. The guy's looking at the trophies on the right side of the screen. Yep. Rip, brother, rip. Okay, I'm at 55.27. All right, we're just waiting on Dan. Looks like Dan got an extra ad this time because he got an easy uh, ad last time. Or maybe they felt sorry for me. They kept giving me yeah. all these ads. No, no, you've been getting short on the straw all night. <laughs> all right, I'm at uh, 55.27. All right, here we go. Three, uh, excuse me, one, two, three, go. All right. Come on, guys, wrestle, brothers. I, how is he coaching wrestling? He doesn't know how to do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where's, uh, where's the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes? Yeah. yeah. D- 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 oh, Chopper. This is like the equivalent of the statue scene in Rocky Three now. It's the wall, brother! It's the wall, dude! Clowns. I love it how Hulk has a trainer. It's like, what the fuck? You don't need one. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's good that they're interrupting this nice kids gathering here for uh, community stuff. Yeah, let's uh, let's book a match. Hogan was beaten to death by Zeus in front of children in the, uh, <laughs> at a community charity event this weekend. Stop it! Stop it! He's already dead! 
<laughs> new Jack. I like the new Jack comment, Dan. That was perfect. <laughs> new Jack. I'll kill him. I'll kill that motherfucker. I'll stab him. Hold on, kids. He needs Mr. T now. Everyone just Keep Zeus away up. from the children. All of a sudden, he uses one of the kids as a bodyguard. Take this kid, not me. <laughs> 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 You can tell that's Jim Johnson music right there, too. Yeah. Vince would, sh Vince would show up and Vince would look at Kurt Fuller and be like, hey, this is we're not doing cross-promotional bullshit. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He didn't back out kid. from anybody, you dumb asshole. That doesn't work for Hogan, brother. Do you not understand the do you not understand the concept of contracts and licensing? <laughs> you fucking moron. Oh, Hogan's refusing the challenge. Yeah, because you don't work for the promotion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised Stephanie McMahon as a kid doesn't have a cameo in this thing. This is like this is like Ric Flair showing up by helicopter being like, I challenge you, Hulk, with the NWA championship. Yeah. It's like, who the so fuck are you? Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, like you said before, I mean, that's kind of Eric Bischoff's style. Thinks he wants to try to challenge another promotion that, has, that wants nothing to do with them. Of the heart to heart with his trainer. You can't beat him! <laughs> that was such a cowardly act by them, though, to, like, to approach him in the middle of like a Sports for Kids event and like try to challenge him to a fight in front of a bunch of like, you know, young kids. I mean, what's he supposed to do? Say, yeah, oh. I mean, come on, get out of here. Vince McMahon has a cameo in this scene. You ought to listen to the henchman's voice. Vince McMahon has a cameo. You'll hear it in about 10 seconds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, here we go. The motorcycle now. Here we go. Look at it. like a WCW promo video right here. This is, this is the beginning of WCW Revenge. <laughs> you okay? I'll get him. Yeah. Well, you, yeah, uh, your girl almost just got sexually assaulted you're trying to get him all right you should maybe let the cops do it you fucking moron <laughs> <laughs> rip him man <laughs> do what undertaker jim does johnson you. do what does the what jim undertaker. johnson music again yeah do what uh do what undertaker does to you 13 years from now string him up to the back of the motorcycle <laughs> and drag him. that's so great rip him he just did the rip him In the face, brother. In the face. <laughs> He's laughing. You shouldn't be laughing, asshole. Yeah. Your girl might have PTSD, and he's just yeah. like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, dude. Oh. <laughs> Look at her. She's traumatized. This guy just thinks this. Oh my god! And he's just laughing. Just, ah, he just saw what I did to her. <laughs> he just saw what I did to him. You could have been there 10 minutes ago, asshole. So you had to go beat up the other guy for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> I think this was a freaking joke five minutes ago, and he tossed the guy out of the house. <laughs> think Hogan's trying to do her right then? Oh, jeez. No comment. <laughs> what? what was that? What? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Eric, what did you say? You think Hogan was going to try to do her right then? No! We're not... No! I'm sorry I asked. <laughs> <laughs> what is... How is this legal? I know. <laughs> These are probably union workers. I don't think they'd allow this shit. Take out that Jeff kid that works for Hogan already. That's, that will, you know, do what they did in... Uh... That movie there, um, 
Never back down. Take out the friend of Hogan, and you'll get to Hogan to want to fight you. So is, is, is Zeus beating up Anthony Anderson? Haystacks Calhoun. <laughs> <laughs> I am more over. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> One guy's flipping off Zeus. It's like, do you really want that guy to fight you next? <laughs> Not at all. It would have been hilarious though, if all of a sudden, like at the end of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Zeus, I got somebody for you. <laughs> <laughs> I am over. Wait, that's Jeff. It's Jeff. Hold on, it's Jeff. I guess his name's Jeff. <sighs> Rip fans. Shouldn't wear those t-shirts, dude. You're just proving you're a homer. You could probably got away. The guy could have gotten away had he not been wearing a rip sheet t-shirt. It's like, that's just being an asshole. That's like wearing a um, Packers shirt at Soldier's Field. Why do you do that? There we go. Rip's his brother. Why did you say that? <laughs> <laughs> He's making terrible decisions. That's really quite an age difference on the yeah. brothers. Well, no, he's in a mistake. He, he's not actually Rip's brother. Rip calls everyone brother, and he just thinks that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at them. Look, even the security guard's helping them out right now. Like this is. Even this is not legal. <laughs> Oh, your Rip's brother will let us get you back in here, then. Fuck that. <laughs> you remember the scene in Enter the Dragon where they had Chong Li kill the guards? Well, that's going to be you guys, except Zeus is Chong Li in this situation. Sorry, Zeus didn't mean to stick out, uh, sneak up on you like that. Meet Rip's brother. I don't guess. You're gonna let him take. You're gonna like the, like take hits from him, really. Randy. Randy. It's Randy Marsh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you wanna go? I don't do no bill. <laughs> I bet you're Dang. even tougher than Rep Dang. himself, Randy. What were they even doing here in Rep shirts, anyways? I don't, it, uh, that was the biggest, dumbest thing that they could put up. Like, you don't wear rip shirts to a th something like this. Come on, Randy, come on! <laughs> oh, he kind of, oh, okay. Wow. All right. Randy's yeah, yeah he's, he's, he did all right. I'm waiting for a super kick party. Yeah, yeah, super kick um, party. It's just... Canadian Destroyer, what the fuck? Everybody's doing that now. <laughs> well, look, I can do a super kick. I have Shawn Michaels' love of talent. <laughs> Thank you, Zeus. Thank you. <laughs> Zeus, uh, yeah. Kurt Fuller is looking at Zeus like he's looking at his firstborn child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Zeus. Zeus! <laughs> Where's this Britney Spears music coming from, dude? <laughs> yeah, look at Zeus has his own ring here. Yep. Like a Coca Cola commercial. <laughs> or a Pepsi commercial. Don't you want a diet Pepsi rep? Don't you want to fight Zeus as well? It's Max Hedstrom. Yep. <laughs> Why do they have whole rip posters all hanging up, though? Because, like, you know, motivation to fight your opponent. Like when a thing I, had to I, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that, I was, kind of, I was like kind of confused with the whole thing. What? So that that is where they got that that infamous Ultimate Warrior thing from when they did that the mirror in '98 at Nitro. Yeah, if you remember, I think that's the exact. 
Oh, God, he ripped it off from his own fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Rip ripping down his own poster. Uh, why are you doing that? <laughs> He's trying to bury himself. Yeah. I don't want to bro I just can't do that, dude. Z for Zenith. <laughs> Buy Zenith television. Yeah. <laughs> now this is just destruction of property. I mean yes. purely. I mean, yeah, Zeus committed an assault, but <laughs> That's a heel move right here by Hogan. <laughs> so he can't beat me if he can't train in the ring and he can't use his weight. Can't, can't do it, brother. Oh, brother. strike! He had a strike right there. <laughs> Very impressive, Hogan. Oh, god damn it! Ad break. Four, three, two, one, and ad break. One of three. All right, I got one of one. Oh, there you go. Look at you. One of two. I got one of three. Uh, is it as bad as we remember? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's not as bad because I guess I'm just kind of not really. <laughs> Like when I was in my college years, after all those college video courses, I was just ripping everything apart. No pun intended. With that. <laughs> now that I'm a couple of years away from college, it's like I'm not so analytical about everything anymore. So I can yeah, I know, I know. Like a bad B movie, you know, and not, you know, not rip it apart. It's okay. not. It, it's not the worst, but it's not the best either. I'll admit that. Yeah. I am at one hour seven minutes and forty nine seconds. So pretty much the um, the. <laughs> TV footage is like, you know, and all scrambled. Okay. Who gives a fuck about Cascade? <laughs> <laughs> 107. What were you at, uh, Eric? Uh, sorry. Eric, what, what were you yeah, at? Um, one hour, seven minutes, and 49 seconds. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Okay. We're just waiting on Mark. Oh, we I'm got 25 go. minutes left. Yep, All right. Good to go. All right. Plan. There right, we go. <laughs> I, I know. I know. His brother's on life support, and I'm sitting over here laughing. <laughs> <laughs> This is his Oscar winning scene. This is him trying to get his Oscar. This fucking movie, this scene right here. I have no idea what to make of this movie. It's like a combination of Rocky 2 and Rocky 3. <laughs> Hogan, no selling on the action, but yet overselling on the emotions. Oh, he's crying. Ah, oh, Jesus. Trainer should have been. What are we waiting for? Oh wait. <laughs> when? When? No rock movie. Sorry. It's crying. What the fuck? At least it's a movie and not like uh, doing another Today Show because your girlfriend broke up with you. <laughs> we haven't hit play yet, right? What was that? We haven't hit play yet, right? No, I hit play. Oh, what? Did we? Did we? I don't know. I'm gonna put. It, I'm gonna go back and put it on pause because you know, who knows? I mean, I heard Mark. Or I saw Mark leave a message saying "be right back," but yeah, that's why I'm like, all right, I'll I'll put it on. I'll wait for further. Evaluation or word or whatever. Uh, oh, so the brother's not dead, though. No, not dead. Apparently not. <laughs> uh, 
This is one of the most ludicrous things we've ever done. <laughs> now, now I'm ready for like one of the bo- more bogus WCW pay per views and just do watch it longer than that and be like, what the hell was that? We should watch like the uh, like everything that the Dungeon of Doom did in like '95 and '96, and then just watch our heads literally explode. <laughs> be like, just what the f- what is this? <laughs> All right. Oh, oh this is this 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 is not as bad as I as I thought it was going to be though. I'm like, oh, this is this is right up there with like, you know, this this is not terrible compared to others that I've seen. Yeah, I don't think I would actually put... I don't think I would actually agree with that horror rating on IMDb. No, I'd give it at least a 6, maybe a 7. I mean... Yeah, I was thinking around a 6. It's a 6. You know, it's not exactly memorable either. Like, but at the same time, it's not exactly... It's not terrible, but it's not great. Like, that's the category that I put it in. But there are a lot of movies that I love that are like that. That's true, yeah. Like, you could, like, I know I'll have some movies where it's like people, (laughs) what did you really see in that movie? And then there's really like those big bar, those, um, those, uh, they, then there's this, this, like, those big box office ones that, like, people rant and rave about, and I'll be like, that movie sucked. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i think that's why you know when i go see a movie and people would ask oh what'd you think of it i never say if it's good or bad i'll only say if i liked it or didn't like it yeah it's harder now because i don't go to the movies that much now anymore mm-hmm. like before i used to go like i used to try to go like every week and then um I just stopped that because it was just so many bad. The problem is, is then the bad movies get mixed in with the good movies sometimes because you're just like, I soak, I go so often. I forget now. <laughs> what was this? Oh, this is good. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I guess what's going to be interesting though, be, I mean, with the whole virus pushing everything back, now all these movies are going to be all crammed together so now it's like I feel like you have like multiple movies so you might want to go see it like one sitting yeah I mean um, I think with drive-ins drive-ins I think will probably be like the first ones to kind of uh, make their claim back like as far as people being able to go like and it's probably the safest means of doing it anyways just because of you know it's you're staying in your car you know obviously you can't which I think is fine, anyways, because you get away with more to drive in. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You just do, folks. If you want to drink in the drive-in, you can do it. If you want to smoke weed at the drive-in, you can do it. <laughs> if you want to um, other things at the drive-in, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the perfect way, and at the same time, you don't even have to leave your car ever to go like, get like snacks. Because you could just go to Walmart and spend ten dollars for like for everything that you need instead right. of ten dollars for a bucket of popcorn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, or actually, it's more like eighty eighty. It's eighty five dollars now, I think, for popcorn at the movie theater. Yeah, there was that one meme about like AMC possibly like um, you know closing down, and the response was, "What the fifty six dollars for a small popcorn?" <laughs> and a small soda wasn't able to cover them. Well, you know, I mean, everybody's sitting there like, well, the movie theaters could go out of business. I'm like, the movie theaters were hurting before this. Like, they weren't they were exactly doing fantastic before this anyways. But more people, like, if you look at the raw numbers, I know that, um, I understand that uh, the Avengers made the most money out of any movie in history last year. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, less people went to the movies just because of the fact that when you're charging 14 bucks a showing right that adds up it's the inflation costs of it you know and 
you know, it's not like it was in the eighties. It's not like it was in the seventies where you can go to for to see a movie for three or four dollars. That's right. Dan, you know, that's now it's like fourteen dollars. You know, so right, the Dan. money. What I said, you're absolutely right. Popcorn is eighty five dollars now. <laughs> Eighty-five dollars. All right. Uh, Eighty-five dollars. You guys want to rewind it to one oh seven and forty seconds? Yeah. Uh, uh, forty seconds. Yeah, forty seconds. Yep. Whoops. Hold on. There we go. One oh seven forty. Pizza dudes got thirty seconds. <laughs> Forty seconds. He's got forty. Oh, damn it. One oh seven forty. Yeah, with Hogan smiling uh, wildly after throwing the. Uh, I went to the forty. I went to the forty. Yeah, yeah. And it just got me to an ad now. Oh jeez. Oh. oh shit. Oh damn it. Luckily, it's only one of one though. Oh Dan, you know what? Uh, you guys might find interesting is I found a deleted scene from that Ninja Turtles two movie, not the one we grew up with, but the the new one. And there was a deleted scene with April O'Neil from the original Ninja Turtles movie in it. It was it was pretty interesting. It was her and Megan Fox having lunch. And then in, uh, the original April O'Neil tells the new April O'Neil, she goes, in a way I am, me and you are the same person. Like, no shit. They should have kept that scene on. Yeah, it was a good scene. It was a pretty nice deleted well, scene. I have not seen the, um, the new two movies. I haven't seen the new movies because I just, it's like the new... It's like the new Ghostbusters to me. It's like I don't want to. I don't it's, want to go through with this. It's not as good, but it's not terribly bad. Right. Okay. I mean, I saw them both. I didn't. I didn't have a problem with them. I just wish they get away from the CGI, uh, honestly. But um, I'll, I'll send the scene over to you. April meets April. Deleted scene. This is a pretty good scene, actually. It wasn't in the movie, but uh, I like the second one a little bit better, honestly. But it was all right. It was just. It was. It was good. I mean, I, I wouldn't say it's terribly. Bad. It's just not. It's not as good as like the first two Ninja Turtle movies, especially. Um, Eric, where are you at on the ad? Oh, I'm um, I'm uh, one oh seven forty. Okay, and Dan, you're there. Yep. Okay, here we go. One, uh, the three, two, uh, yeah, one, two, three, play. There we go. All right. Oh, there he is, Randy. Oh, oh Jesus. Randy, brother. He's got his Hollywood attire on in this scene. <laughs> I'm actually wearing my Hollywood Hogan t-shirt. Are you? Yeah. Which one's that? The, the hey, little one? brother. Uh, the, um, no, this one is the Hollywood. It's one of the ones that WWE. I have two of them now. One of the ones WWE came yeah. out with last year. And then they came out with another NWO for Life shirt this year for the yeah. Hall of Fame. Which, of course, no one, uh, no one will be able to wear it because... Mm -hmm. It's going to be no Hall of Fame induction, probably. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, exactly. Well, this uh, holds the bellows off from being in the Hall of Fame a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> so yeah, Hogan, I it's can her... see what you're talking about now. Hogan trying to get his own Oscar with this scene right here. Yeah, yeah it's just fucking... This is acting... This is a combination... Like, this Rocky is two. his Rocky Two and Rocky Three moment. Yeah. I'm just waiting for the trainer to just be like, What are we waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> Randy, brother. Fucking crying. Jesus Christ. At least he's doing it on today's show, though, pissing and moaning about his girlfriend. I love Nikki. Shut up. <laughs> You're embarrassing yourself. In this very ring. There's no way. In this know. very Vince ring. Vince McMahon to be suing the hell out of this guy right now for this. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get his. Oh, look, a six sided ring. Now we know where TNA got that idea from. <laughs> Jeez. Actually, this might be like eight-sided, actually. I remember when the commercial came out for this movie, that's all they were showing was like this brick-breaking scene. And of course, instead of like, the, he's helping his brother be able to walk again, you know, because, yeah. <laughs> Rip's brother must die in order for me to make money. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Oh, Jesus. Oh, look, he's playing Nintendo. 
<laughs> yeah. Hey, is that uh, it's like Bo Mike. Jackson video game? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything he hits, he destroys. <laughs> Brilliant. 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 We get a new tough guy, season two. Is that where they got tough enough for him? Yeah, seriously. Yeah. All of a sudden, Vince McMahon walks in. He's like, this fucking thing ain't happening. Yeah. Zeus ain't under contract. He hasn't been shut down, yeah. <laughs> one of our talents. <laughs> Mr. Versetti. Eight-sided ring. No wonder where TNA got this idea from. Hogan's like, when he got the TNA, you're getting rid of that six-sided ring. I'm not dealing. I'm not working with that, brother. It doesn't work for me, brother. Oh, this is this is. Why is this being held at a high rise? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Thirty Rock, and uh, you know, staring lives out of the Thirty Rock. It's like, okay. Look at his manager just staring a hole at him. <laughs> I would have just wa I would have just told Oak. I would have been like, "He's not under contract. You don't have to do anything." <laughs> oh, here comes Randy for more punishment. He ends up getting killed at the end of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> if you just said, "Hey, look, I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm just a fan. I'm sorry. I, I decided to become a Zeus fan. Instead of toughing it out, it would have been a more successful escape." Yeah, we hate rep and just toss the shirts. Oh, look. Oh, oh, here we go. She's going to be kidnapped now. Oh, no. This is just mind games, of course. Yeah. Oh, look. Samantha's being held hostage now. This guy's like a James Bond villain, for goodness sakes. My partner might be more comfortable watching Zeus than you believe your boy. Wouldn't you like some peanuts and cracker jacks? Are you watching the match? Sit down, Samantha. Actually, you know who would have been a better, uh, better than Kurt Fuller for this? James Woods. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, oh, right, yeah. like in the I specialist. Would definitely... <laughs> James Woods would have been great. The specialist, he was unbelievable. Uh, he was great casino, too. Like, James Woods is good, really good at anything. Vampires, too. He was fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm rip you apart, brother. I'm listening, brother. I thought Kurt Fuller gave the Ghostbusters hell. This is nothing compared to what the hell he said. K-Fame! 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 That doesn't work for me, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, doesn't just, doesn't uh, Hogan get creative control in this? He does. This guy doesn't <laughs> fucking get that. Go look for her. Get her now. Well, you gotta remember, I ain't doing a fucking job. What, 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 you gotta remember. You gotta focus on what you know and what you're not being told. What you're being told is that Hulk Hogan's brother Randy was attacked by Zeus. What you're not being told is that Hulk Hogan's character was behind the whole damn thing. Just make it seem like it's an angle to get himself over. <laughs> he needs to garner himself support for Babyface. So this is what he's doing. He's sitting there during negotiations, and he's like, "You don't have an idea. How about you guys oh, get the crap out God. of Brother Randy?" The winged eagle with that white strap looks sick. It does look sick. Didn't Warrior? I want it. What, did, what, color, what color did Warrior have? Blue. He had blue. He had white, and then he had the black. But okay. I, I, that white. I really want the white one now. Like just create a might new be, game. I might. Well, I'm just saying. No, I might want to own it. Yeah, <laughs> just create it in 2K though for the time being. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want the, the like. I have the uh, I have the one in black, but I want the one in white now because that yeah. just looks sick. Hey, Mark, are you going to create uh, Kurt Fuller's character in uh, 2K? Mr. Prowl. I already got Vince McMahon. I thought, but I... <laughs> <laughs> I remember in uh, Actually, 2K, no, but... 2K14, you can get the rip colors. In the, uh, you can either put it on yourself or download it. And... Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, here's the thing, though. You could do, like, McMahon versus... Um... Kurt Fuller's character. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, I can have him be the, owner. the battle of the company. He can own WFC, yeah. WFCW, Eric. 
<laughs> and, then, and then have and then just download Zeus, yeah. and then Vince and Ta- and then Vince and Hogan go up against Zeus and Kurt Fuller. Yeah, that'd be, that'd, that'd go. be a good one. <laughs> that would be a good one. I'd like that. Boom. And then Vince is just like, ah. <laughs> Rip brother. What was the SummerSlam they faced off at? Was that 90? 89. 89. 89, okay. That was 89. Okay. And then uh, he was on the Million Dollar Team at Survivor Series of 89. And then the No Holds but the, ma- the the movie and the match, which was a uh, steel cage match. <laughs> ah, the poor rig- <laughs> the poor rig- <laughs> So this was probably filmed right after WrestleMania four, then, because they had the WrestleMania yes, it was. shirts, and then uh, that was why I, for a while. That was why Savage got the belt. Yep. Because you know, can he get the loan it to him for the year? <laughs> yeah, he loaned it to him. Yeah. I'm gonna go do this movie and make a bunch of fucking money, but you can have the belt. Yep. But I'm still gonna I'm still gonna steal your thunder at the end of four. What? Okay. Uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, Macho Man's like, okay, you're going to win the tournament tonight, okay? It's going to be you up there with Miss Elizabeth celebrating. <laughs> oh, by the way, Hogan's here today, and, um, yeah, he's going to be uh, celebrating with you tonight. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. Make it look good for ten minutes. Yeah, really? <laughs> work eight, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine him being on the phone with Brock Lesnar? Oh, Jesus. Come on, Rip. Try it. Hey, Brock, I'm still trying harder than you, Randy. Brock versus Zeus would be 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. F5, F5, one, two, three. <laughs> and then Brel's just looking at him and he's just like, are you going to tell him what Brock's just like, fuck you? <laughs> Look at she's just going to sneak right out here. Just God, quietly. these are terrible security guards. Yeah, they can't even hold a hostage right. She's got the equivalent of a cardboard box and fucking Metal Gear right now. That's pretty much what she's doing. <laughs> just get out there, go, just go, just, just go. Don't even, don't yeah. even, just walk out casually. That's all you gotta do. Just leave. <laughs> But of lady. course, she ha- she has to do it in dramatic effect. Yeah, exactly. With the music. The question is, if if she didn't escape, would Hogan do the job, or would Hogan be like, oh, uh, I don't Hogan, do jobs, brother. Hogan doesn't job no matter what, Dan. Yeah, exactly. Oh, get out of there, you fucking moron! <laughs> you gonna notice like right away too. Run, run, run! She's like Thirty seconds ago, she would have been out the door and gone. <laughs> Dummy. <laughs> that, girl, that girl on the right looked like she was laughing at Rupp. Never mind. Samantha's escaped. Freaking emerald dress like it's freaking Wizard of Oz or something. <laughs> Why? It's a cocktail. It's a cocktail God, goddamn dress. Why are you wearing it to a fight? <laughs> yeah, we never see uh, people going to oh. a Almost. Oh, just closed down his fingers. Door closed. Door closed. Door closed. <coughs> oh yeah, let's just start shooting her. Looks at me. I'm a freaking security guard, not a freaking hitman. It's no. That was uh. That's all of a sudden, the hit, all of a sudden, Bret Hart walks in. And he's yeah. like, "What? Some call hitman?" <laughs> that was definitely one of your mall rent a cops. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Hogan just looks at Brett and just like, not my fucking movie, brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nope, test of strength. Hogan can't even work a, a match without nope. doing a test of strength, even in this movie, huh? Test of strength. No. Brother. He did it for fucking eight minutes with Warrior at WrestleMania 6. Remember, um... WCW NWO Revenge had the test of strength. I think, um, yes. did No Mercy have that too? I don't think they don't did, think but they did. I know that Revenge did because Revenge, it was like when you grappled at the same time, two people, yeah. right. and you just got to this test of strength. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and during the test of strength. I actually yeah. liked that. That was yeah. pretty good. Yeah. I like, the, I like the new option they have in the 2K games where it just kind of locks up and then it goes to a minigame. Yeah, that's good too. Yeah. 
I remember the mini games they had in uh, what was it? Oh, SmackDown geez. versus Raw. Oh, jeez. And of course they show up. Yes. Oh. Oh, we'll let the fire extinguisher. The manager's <laughs> been looking to beat someone down for like the last thirty minutes of this movie. Oh, he has. That ring announcer should not even be up. Like he got hit literally in the face. Where's good old Jr. <laughs> Jr. Right now, Jr. would be putting over Hogan. Yeah. <laughs> These ropes are as flimsy as a uh, independent show, huh? Oh, th- th- it's one of the most. It's this is one of the worst ring, like one of the worst arenas I've ever seen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and you'll never see fans be dressed up like they're going to a wedding. Right. Not a chance. Still more fans Maybe than we've seen in the past couple of months, though. That's true. Yeah. The only fans that would dress up like this is those are, are the fans that are show up to every show for wrestling. They would dress up in like nice cocktail waitresses and tuxedos. Yeah. So the same six people. Yeah, but you'd never get the fans today to dress up like this, even if you told them all. They'd no. be like, because uh, they're all neckbeards. They wouldn't do anything. Yeah. They can't afford it. Yeah. What's a dress shirt? <laughs> yeah, I just got, my whole my whole wardrobe is thirty thousand uh, WWE T-shirts that I get on a two for twenty five dollars sale on WWE dot com. Hey, hey, not you, Dan. Hey, hey, yeah, I know because I know I how know to dress. You got a suit and tie, Dan. <laughs> Dan knows I want to dress like a fanboy. I want to dress like Ric Flair. That's exactly <laughs> it, folks. It's a good balance. <laughs> Stop it now! Stop this match at night! Stop this match! Uh oh. You can't. Samantha's out the box now. <laughs> He's telling 1 800 collect? <laughs> <laughs> He's he has control. I don't know why he's flipping out. Yep. Oh, that's his finish. You see, like the, the uh, Biff Tannen uh, Jr. there, Gr- Griff Tannen uh, boots right there from Back to the Future, too. <laughs> oh, that's true. Without the spikes, though. Oh, he's wiggling his pinky. Uh, his brother, oh, he's learning to walk again. You better. You, better... <laughs> <laughs> you know, the manager can walk away and not get hit like that if he just. Yeah, he could have. He could have walked away with that. Get away from him. <laughs> Uh-oh, is he starting to rip it up? He is ripping up. He's, he's ripping it up. He's ripping it. <laughs> <laughs> laugh, Dan. Come on, laugh. <laughs> yeah, I was good. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Brother. <laughs> You think Hogan just sat there and said, I should have just taken the additional fifth year as champion in WWF that made this movie? Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, he should have. <laughs> One more year at top would have been fine. I wonder, yeah, he, the, I wonder if The Rock was watching this before he went to Hollywood and was like, all right, note to self, I'm not going to be in a movie like this. Well, here's the thing. is that It's funny you say that because uh, Rock took when Rock went on his first date with uh, Danny. They went to go see Mr. Nanny in the movie theater. And Rock, when he met Hogan, he told him he wanted his 10, 15 bucks back from going to see the movie. Yeah. So there you go. I haven't seen Mr. Nanny in at least 20 years. No, I've never seen it. I've seen like five minutes Uh-oh. of that movie. I never had any interest in seeing it. I saw Suburban Commando was the Hulk Hogan movie I was watching growing yeah, up. Yes, so, so, Suburban Commando and, and this are the two best. Yep. Uh, anything else after that, uh, it's either a cameo or that's it. Mm-hmm. Like, cause any starring vehicle that he's in after Suburban Commando is just, you know, it's going to be a pile of shit. Yeah. Thunder in Paradise. I used to watch all the time though on TBS or whatever it was. I used to watch that all. Yeah. The time. I used to watch it too when it was, uh, yeah, yeah. Cause it was, it was a cool concept. Yeah, I mean, cool. you know, like, I like that concept of like the boat, you know, yeah, two mercenaries. Yeah, that was a pretty awesome story. For it, being a kid, I enjoyed yeah. it. It was creative at the time. I liked it. Uh, now, so much, I'd be like, oh, what is this? Yeah, what the hell? The movie wasn't too bad, though. The, the first movie. No, it wasn't. Had, yeah. I just remember they were in that like ca- uh, uh, cave <laughs> there and they had like the water bag to breathe in. <laughs> oh, so God, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll never forget that scene. 
rip him. Rip him, brother. Hogan doing just a strangle. This is like the strangle choke from the old Sega games back in the day. You just do like the face thing, the face gouge all the time, and the throat choking. Remember you used to choke the guy in the old Sega games, Dan? Royal oh, Rumble. yeah. <laughs> the choke and the eye gouge. Yeah. That was, the Royal Rumble and the Genesis were so much better because Hogan yeah. was in it, but yeah. uh, I did like I did like Royal Rumble for the SNES because Ric Flair was in it. Yeah. Yeah, I had the one. And down he oh. goes. See, see was, his growl right there reminds, that's like typical, your typical internet fan reaction to your favorite wrestler losing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. Growl right now is every indie mark. Hogan oh, can't win again. <laughs> Come on, Rip, you can do it, man. Come on, desperately yelling. Oh. You know, I, I, the sad <laughs> thing. Oh, oh, oh boy. <laughs> Get out of the way here. He's, he just. <laughs> Where the hell is he going? Oh, he just threw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now it's personal. Mm hmm. <laughs> See, Zeus, We're all thought this watching was, Zeus thought this was going to be in a walk in the park. Now he's realizing he can't stop Hogan. Or, excuse me, rep. Oh, back. Zeus, Zeus blew a 28 to 3 lead. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Hogan's getting those two point conversions on the freaking circle. <laughs> Here you go, Amandola. <laughs> now, now I'm breaking the fourth wall. Hey, Danny Amandola. <laughs> Bro, it's Arthur Blank. Yeah. <laughs> Behind you! Behind you! He's getting up! It's funny that um, during the pipe bomb, uh, CM Punk mentioned he was upset Luke Gallows got fired. And now... Uh, Luke Gallows got fired again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like when they brought him back a couple of years ago, and they're like, oh yeah, this is uh, Luke Gallows. He just joined WWE as if he wasn't there years and years ago as part of the straight edge. Society or Festus or anything. It's like, come on. This guy is, yep, here this we guy go, is overreacting so much. He is over. He's a uh, typical internet fan. Yep. AEW is <laughs> this is this is every internet fan on one day when on Thursdays when the reports come out for ratings. Yeah. You now you're off the air. Now you're not even broadcasting right now. Jeez. Well, technically, Zeus didn't lose them. Yep. Nobody saw us. <laughs> <laughs> this is the 90s. We're going to sue you. This is the 90s. We're going to sue you. Double X! Double X. Oh, there we go. Oh. The ring collapsed. <laughs> oh, he's bleeding. Please do the turn and growl. Here it comes. Oh, he's doing the grin. <laughs> and the growl. Brr, brother, dude. Uh-oh. <laughs> I do like the the blue tights though. Yeah. But the white the white knee pads, those yep. are good. Yeah, blue boots or white boots? I forget. I think oh. he's got white boots. Yeah, white boots. Up, oh, Max Shrek. He's getting Max Shrek right there. <laughs> he's Max Shrek. Have you ever gone one on one with Muhammad Shrek? Bruce, shame on you. Clearly, he hasn't. Yep. Not bleeding out the mouth. Wipe yourself off. You did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, everybody's cheering. They just saw a guy get electrocuted. They're all cheering. <laughs> he just killed what two people. What the hell? He, he just, just killed, killed two, two people. people. Yeah. <laughs> I would be looking at Hulk right now. I'd be like, we got to get the fuck out of here. You just killed two people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the security guards are still around somewhere, too. The stormtroopers. <laughs> They're still knocked out. Yeah, I can walk again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like that, he could magically walk as soon as it was all over. Brother, was he trying to, last was shot. He trying to do the too sweet? 
Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. On, oh, American Ninjas starting in uh, 29 seconds for me. What movie? American Ninja awesome. 3. I got, well, getting Ninja lone, 3. I got Lone Wolf McQuaid coming oh, no, on next. Good. Lone Wolf McQuaid's awesome. I got that movie. <laughs> I love that movie. Kicks. <laughs> no, I, might, I, might, I might skip American Ninja 3 Blood Hunt and go to Once Bitten. Yeah, Once Bitten. Care. The Incredible Hulk Returns, Double Dragon, Over the Top, Over, over the, the top, top is on this. Over the top. <laughs> Holy shit. I watched Lionheart a couple weeks ago with Van Damme. That was pretty good. We'll have to do uh, this. Double Dragon. Over the Top. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to do Over the Top uh, another time. <laughs> That'll be in a future episode. <laughs> you know what we should do if we can find it? Street Fighter the movie. Oh, oh my geez. god. I watched Mortal Kombat the movie a couple weeks ago and it was it was tough. I I I, I dragged through it so bad. Raul Julia's performance said that it though is fantastic. Yeah. Oh, I agree. Yeah. But the first Mortal Kombat, I I I, I thought it was okay. It's the second one where it's like when you watch it again, when you like, will die. Yeah. You know, Goro looks like such a um, I don't know. He looks like a created character. You got Invasion USA, Escape from L.A. You got some pretty good. Pretty good action movies. Invasion though. USA is good. Yeah, that's a good one. Time to die. Double Dragon. Escape from it's... LA. Escape from LA is not bad either. It's, it's not as good as Escape from New York, but it's still uh, still pretty. No, good. it's pretty good. Yeah. Steve Buscemi's on it, which is even funnier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark, exactly. when you when you were away, um, Dan and I, we were talking about one of these days we have to like go find like some crazy like WCW stuff and just yeah. like. Do a watch along with them. <laughs> I, no, I heard. I heard. I was. Uh, I was still listening in as I was away. Uh, oh, they have the original Street Fighter, like the Street Fighters, on this. Yeah, the original. I'm like, no, that's not the original. Uh, is it? Yeah, it might be. I don't know, but yeah, they got some good stuff on this. Yeah, I'm. All, I like all these old action movies. Anyways, they're always all good. I agree. Yeah, they seem. They're a lot more fun than a lot of the stuff that they've been putting out recently. You know, they got so. like Enter the Ninja and Revenge of the Ninja on this thing. If you remember those movies, with the Show Kasuji, those are pretty. Fun no movies. kidding. Yeah, they got those movies on there. Enter the Ninja was on here. They had Best of the Best on this thing up up until a couple of weeks ago, and they pulled it. <laughs> it was on. That's uh, the- that's the best. Is an underrated flick. Yeah, it's good. No, you know what? It was sorry. It wasn't on Tubi. It was on uh, Pluto. Oh, okay. Pluto, yeah, Pluto's got those movies. I got all these things. I've been downloading these movie apps like crazy. It's because I like those obscure '80s, '90s movies so much. I think we all do. And um, it's just nice to watch all these old movies you can't see anymore. These are the movies you used to pick up in the video store back in old times, you know, and. Those used to exist. You could do that, but now it's like, okay, well, whatever's available is uh, available, I guess. Well, there's no uh, movies. There's no uh, blockbuster anymore. Oh, okay, I'll figure something else out. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at uh, Pluto TV now, so they got some pretty decent movies. I gotta try to see if I can find the Street Fighter anywhere and see if that's uh, that's available. Domestic disturbance with John Travolta and uh, Vince. Oh Martin. Jesus Christ! Here's, oh, a, here's a here's a random movie for you. Evolution with David Duchovny and um, Julia Roberts. He's a mystery. <laughs> Evolution, <laughs> Evolution is a mystery. Until 2005, Evolution was in misery. Um, <laughs> Way of the Gun. They got Way of the Gun on Pluto. Death War. All right, that's decent. Yeah, uh, Bloodsport. Bloodsport. Bloodsport's on all of these. Kickboxers on Pluto. Uh, what else? I saw. I saw. I could have sworn I saw that on Tubi too. Yeah. Ooh, King of New York is on Tubi. Oh, Ooh. Yeah. And Lord of War. <laughs> Jeez. Just the Fury. Michael. Michael Keaton. Multiplicity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You saw, are you on Pluto right now too, Eric? Or? Is that on? I'm still Tubi? on um, Tubi. Uh, Tubi. Yeah. You know what? Hammer multiplicity. Yeah. You know what was a good Kurt Russell movie? It was Breakdown. Yeah, that was good with uh, J T. Walsh. Yep, yep, that was a good one. Gang Related's on Pluto with uh, Tupac and Belushi. Oh God. Yep. Another another Belu- uh, random Belushi uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. tandem. God forbid we ever do real men on the live stream. Jeez, we'd be really, <laughs> we really in a freaking gutter at that point. Jeez. Why are you crying, Bob? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Oh man! I watched that movie just on your recommendation. Yeah. Like I actually wasted. I I went and looked for it. Like I I, I think I actually got that on a torrent because I was oh, like, okay. I have to find this movie because Mark has told oh. me how interesting it is. Here's a movie for you, and I wonder, Eric, if you've seen this movie. Michael Keaton and Matthew Modine and Melanie Griffin in Pacific Heights. Oh yeah, isn't that the tenant from hell? Yep. Yep, that's yeah. you and your parents probably don't like too much, but uh, yeah, we don't like that film. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen that, Eric? It's a nutty, nutty. No, movie. I haven't. Yeah, Pacific Heights on Pluto. Write that. Put that on your list of like movies you need to see. That's that's a wild one. Oh, Michael Keaton's the villain. Yeah. yeah, Michael Keaton's the villain in that one. You get airplane. Yeah, I'm just still going through on uh, Tubi right now and got. Found airplane. Wow, shooting them, finding like 40s and 50 movies. Yeah, right. They got Buffalo 66 on Pluto too. That's a good one. Christina Ricci and uh, Vincent Gallo. Vincent Gallo. Yeah, you, you, Dan, you've probably seen that movie before, right? Buffalo 66. Of course I have. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say. Yeah, uh, I used to watch that all the time in my college years. That was like something I used to pick up on. That was an IFC staple when it IFC was, was it actually. It was network. absolutely. Yep, it used to be on like the uh, HBO all the time too back then. Yeah, and I, I um, I mean, I've seen it a couple of times. Uh, I've never really liked Vincent Gallo that much. I only like but... that one particular movie with him. I'm not too big of. A, I don't really know much about him. He was in what uh, Texas, something, something Tuesday in Texas or something like that, whatever it was called. Ah. Yeah. Uh... He did Brown Bunny too, which Brown Bunny is controversial for several different reasons. Yeah, but um, I don't know. It's just something bit, like he reminds me of James Franco, except less talented, and less oh, charisma- okay. charismatic. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't have much charisma um, at all. No, he sucks. Uh, like <laughs> I, I was surprised that Christina Ricci even did that film. Mm. I'm thankful she did, but still at the same time, <laughs> they got oh they got double team on this thing with uh, on Pluto. It's Van. Then they got disturbing and, behavior and with Mickey Rourke. Yeah, right, Mickey Rourke. Yeah, disturbing behavior with Katie Holmes and Cyclops from X Men. I remember and, that. Then they got the movie Jawbreaker, which I've seen once, way back one. I remember. I just remember that one movie because they kidnapped that. They were kidnapping that girl for a prank in that movie. Oh yeah, and, yeah. And they put the jaw, Yeah, they put yeah. the Jawbreaker in her mouth, and they taped and her shot. Choked on it. And they threw her in the freaking trunk, and then they took her out to tell her it was just a kidnapping prank and they opened up took off the tape and the girl was freaking dead and the thing was in her throat i i i'll tell you to this day that's one movie i've only seen i, I think i might have picked it up I, I think i might have seen it sometime again since then because i remember seeing it again i remember i just shut the movie up i don't think i ever finished that movie because i just i i just think i'm always watching the first 15 20 minutes of it or whatever and i just said oh this is a, this is too much but i'll just never to, to the end of to the day i die i will never forget that freaking scene in that movie and, that, and they call it a comedy too it's like it's, it's, that way that girl died was nuts you know it was like man that was also another one that people there were so many movies that people in high school would tell you like oh you got to check this out and then you'd watch it, and you'd be like, "This is a piece of shit." Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is this is one of them. That was yeah. one of those movies uh, that somebody had recommended, and I was just like, "Yeah, what?" Yeah. <laughs> they got Southland Tales. South, speaking of bad movies, Southland Tales is on Pluto too at the Rock. Show oh God, God, you remember? You were excited about that for years. Remember that? I had to wait. Three oh, years. I do remember that. Yeah, yeah. It's not too. It's not too bad. It's just it, the problem is, is that I could have done. There's some things I could have. If I had rewritten that movie, I could have made it a lot better. I think it spent too much time on its BS. Um, but I own the thing on DVD. I bought it from Blockbuster Video when they were going out of business back in the day. I uh, ended up buying it. And it's all right. I watch it from time to time, but not, not too often. Like once every year, once every two to three years, I'll watch it. But uh, yeah, the movie was, they had, well, the problem was, was that they, the, the studios didn't like the fact that they, they well, what really happened was that the movie was supposed to be, when it came out, it was nominated for, like, the Palme d'Or or whatever it is. It was the same award Pulp Fiction had won in, in 94. So, like, mm-hmm. movies that are kind of indie right? They're kind of something completely different. Like, Pulp Fiction is a movie that won that award. Well, they 
they ended up getting nominated for it. So, like, it was 05, I was still at Worcester State, and they had nominated the movie for that award. And I remember it was like, I was working, from, I was doing some college school schooling, uh, non-commuting, I was commuting, rather, and I was working at the same time, so I'd be doing my work from school, you know, at home. Um, and I remember I was on the website listening to the music by Moby, which I thought he did a pretty good score for that. So I remember I was waiting for news to come out, and the website was really elaborate at the time for 2005. And I remember just, like, waiting and waiting and waiting. Well, apparently it was at Can the Cannes Film Festival for this, this award. So at the Cannes Film Festival, the movie wasn't completed, so there was, like, a lot of empty scenes with, like, uh, CGI graphic missing or whatever. So the movie was like two hours and like three hours long practically it ended up getting booed by everyone in the crowd because they thought this movie was going to be like a big deal it was going to be like a big movie for the rock it was going to be like basically the pulp fiction same people made donnie darko made it richard kelly was the director so i had watched donnie darko in the summer of uh 03 or 04 one of those summers i think it was the summer of 03 and i got hooked on that movie and donnie darko became such a hit on at home you know, because it was a movie that wasn't a hit in the movie theater, but it was a, it was a cable hit. You know, that, it doesn't happen as much anymore. Well, it does, it does actually with Netflix, actually. You know, but it was your old typical movie back in the day where people, you know, like we were talking about Real Men. It, that was a movie no one really heard of. It was just a movie right. that you might see on, like, Weekend at Bernie's. Like, that was the movie. It used to be on Cinemax all the time when I was, like, seven or eight years old. And you'd watch that movie twice a week, you know, back in the day, the way, uh, you know, Technology used to be. You'd watch movies more often. You know, we don't watch movies as repetitively now as we did back then because there's more options. No. But, um, you know, this movie was, was booed so bad. So, But the guy who made Donnie Darko, people thought it was going to be a big hit. It was like, oh, man, it's the guy who made Donnie Darko and The Rocks in it and Sarah Michelle Gellar's in it and this huge cast is in this movie. Oh, this is he's got a bigger budget. Oh, man, this thing's going to be a bigger hit than, than Donnie Darko. So, Donnie Darko had no hype and became a hit. This movie had a lot of hype and then completely blew up before it even really hit the ground. So, what happened was, was that, and I followed him on, like, MySpace, when MySpace was the thing between 05 and 08. Um, I'd followed him pretty much on Facebook, anywhere I could, and I'd follow all the updates. So all of a sudden, this movie, it was like, okay, it's going to come out in 06. So, it became like a 2005 movie. Now, it's a 2006 movie. And then now it's not going to come out in 2007 at all. So this is why when Ghostbusters is going through what it's going through right now, I'm like, oh, this is going to be like another Southland Tales movie. It's going to be like something I was ready for. And, I mean, it was supposedly being made in 04. And then it was supposed to come out like October 05. Never comes out. Then it's supposed to come out like March of 06. Never comes out. Then they had announced some date in um, 2007. Then finally, like around... The middle, late part of 07, all of a sudden you started seeing updates all the time. We're editing this, we're editing that. Finally, it came time for them to get approved to be released in the movie theater. Except the studio, Sony, Sony's independent. Sony bought it, and then they they released it through their independent um, channel. So they, they decided, that, like, look, the problem with this movie is that there's no... like It's the kind of movie like someone like me... And the, the per thing about me is I'm someone that will watch the big time mainstream movies, but I'm also someone I'll sit down and watch independent movies people have never heard of in their freaking lives because it's just the way I am, you know, and most of us are. Technically, technically me being a rarity in that kind of case now is, is kind of obsolete itself because with Netflix now, everyone watches random stuff all the time. You have all these people now that are watching all kinds of stuff. Like when Napoleon Dynamite was coming out back in 05, I said, this is going to be another movie that I like, I get, and that nobody else is really going to catch on to other than like a real restricted audience of people. Well, that movie ended up blowing up into the big thing to such a big deal that I actually ended up hating the movie because it was so overly imitated and talked about. So, with Netflix, like the South, thing that happened with Southland Tales back then would have never happened now because it probably just would have gone to like a Netflix app and become like a Netflix movie. They probably would have bought So what ended up happening was they released it in limited theaters. AMC, there was an AMC theater north of my location about 40 minutes from here that ended up 
showing it, and it made like less than a million dollars in the movie theater nationally because of limited release. And then finally, they just distributed it on DVD, and I caught it. It was right around the same time of WrestleMania 24, I think. I remember watching it, and I just went out and bought it. I didn't even, you know what? I did rent it. That's right. I rented it, and then the movie the- uh, video store was going out of business a couple of weeks later in 08. That was 08, it was like the death nail year for, for video stores. I remember every local video store that was still around pretty much laid an egg in 08. The independent place I went to to rent videos, Dollar Store, a dollar, dollar Video 2 went out of business that year, and then Blockbuster went out of business. Blockbuster was conquering video stores left and right, and then all of a sudden, boom, they were just gone. But I, um, yeah, so I caught it. I, I do like the movie. I just think that there's some stuff in it that could have been cut. Um, Mandy Moore, I never thought well of her before that. I never really saw too much movies in her, but I've been a fan of her, honestly. Since I don't watch her freaking show that she makes, though. But I've been a fan of her personally since that movie because I thought that she was great in it. Um, Sarah Michelle Gellar was great in it, of course. And Sean William Scott was actually surprisingly good in that movie as well as a dramatic actor. But um, it's, not, it's not a movie I really recommend to my friends because I just don't think that you know, like I recommend it to you guys because the rocks in it, you know, so I know you guys got that going, but the, my, you know, other friends that I don't think are as, as like with you guys, Joe, like I know you guys are, you, you're like me, you're very much, you'll uh, take on different media and watch it and review it and critique it. You know what I mean? But other, like the everyday friends that are just watching the everyday movies, I mean, like my, you know, acquaintances all that stuff i would never recommend it because it's just i don't know i like like the friends like you guys i know or could watch that and critique it with other people i just you know they might just want to throw on frozen or incredibles 2 or something uh instead or or something more mainstream like a marvel movie so it's just you know like i said i it's only a movie i'd recommend to like my friends that were really really close that really really had like a a a, a, a History, history known to me of depth you know what I mean I guess if I'm saying that all right but with this it was just that was the problem with releasing it was that okay someone like myself would probably go to see it but other people out there are just going to look at it like what what the hell is this you know it's you know it's just not something that's that's um you know category uh, able to be categorized it's just, just too much there what is it you know and that was there that was the studio's argument for not releasing it and that what ended up happening too is a lot of people rented the movie at the video store and a lot of people hated it they didn't get it they didn't understand it for someone like me i don't mind a puzzle movie like donnie darko or maholland drive if you've ever seen maholland drive uh, memento is another one christopher nolan <laughs> memento um, yeah. those, those are kind of movies I'd watch that I can I kind of consider puzzle movies where you, you can watch it a hundred times to try to figure it out, you know, so, but it just, it, it never really connected mainstream and they just said, okay, it's limited release, then the DVD. But nowadays what would have happened with that is that they probably would have just negotiated a Netflix deal and then that movie probably would just would have popped up on Netflix or something, you know, probably is what would have happened nowadays, so. Now, Dan, have you ever actually seen that movie? Negative, I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it, yeah. Like I said, I mean, I almost cringe to even recommend it because it's just... Uh, it's know. different. Yeah, it's, it's different, it's different. It's a little outrageous. Right. It might be, I mean... If you're kind of feeling in the mood for, like, a bunch of random stuff that doesn't really make sense, I'd say watch the thing. You know, like, if you're in that That's kind why of... That's if, if I'm into that, I'll just put... It, like, like, last night I was watching... Um, because I'm a subscriber to Shutter, and they do the uh, last drive-in every Friday night with yeah. uh, Joe Bob Briggs. Yeah. So they had another Zenith film last night, uh, which I didn't know even existed. But it was done in 1988. It was done by Troma, who was also the same people oh, that yeah. did the Toxic Talk Crusader Spiders. films. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Duke em High, all that shit. Yeah, yeah. So they, it was called Troma War. They did their own war movie. And... There were a lot of things in it that I was like, this is so can't be made today because it's extremely mm. offensive. Oh, absolutely, yeah. But uh, there were, there were, one of the plot points was really offensive to the point of where <laughs> I don't even want to talk about it because I'm afraid that people will no, be like, seriously. cancel this show. Yeah. But uh, if you want to check it out, it's definitely something to check out. The last 25 minutes, 
is probably some of the craziest military is probably one of the craziest finishes which one to uh to a military movie i've ever seen which one uh w- trauma war oh okay yeah hmm. this and website's that's, uh, still up to this day Jeez, they got their website up and it's got toxic uh the Toxic Crusaders cartoon, I recall. I had some of their figures from KB it's Toy Story. Toma Now is their streaming service, but they have films on Shudder. Uh, the problem with Troma is is that they don't have a you uh, an app for uh, Roku because mm-hmm. I would sign up for the five dollars a month for Troma Now because that gives you access to everything, including all the Toxic Avengers and all that stuff. Those movies are pretty violent too. They, I mean, they were. Very, I love them, yeah. but they're fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Now you go on their, their website still exists. I haven't been on this website in probably, jeez, I probably haven't been on this website in like twenty years. <laughs> they have Toxie um, has their their in their logo. It says trauma, and the oh, it has Toxie's picture, and it says to- you remember the Toxic Crusaders cartoon, don't you? How can I not? Okay, there we of go. I was, I was waiting for that. It was a little bit of a silent break there but yeah I, I had the figures i used to have the figures i used to watch that cartoon i had some of the toys too yeah yeah I, I had a few of them i had like three villains three heroes and i remember that uh that was a pretty it was like a ninja turtles type of show at first i didn't i didn't realize the origin of that cartoon until like years later when well, i was the a same, college kid i went back and the, found out the same, the, sorry the same uh the same toy distributor playmates is actually the same ones that That's did the uh um, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That makes sense, because they were like Ninja Turtles figures, I recall, yeah. I didn't realize that the cartoon was based on such, like, graphic material until I was about a teenager. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm on the internet one day in, like, college, and I'm like, what the hell? There was, like, a there was like a movie? I think it was, like, reminiscing about the the, uh, the cartoon. And all of a sudden, I found out there was, like, a movie. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I mean, it was like it looked like Swamp Thing or something. But it was, it was a... Uh, the, I saw the movies when I was like probably 12 or 13. There was a station in, you probably remember this, Mark, uh, WABU Channel 68 here mm-hmm. in this area used to have, they used to have like the PR guy came into my school one day, time and we were talking and he was just like, you know, to try to do programming for local sometimes is really, we have to get really creative. So he told me, he was like, we're going to start doing like the Toxic Avenger series on like Friday nights. Nobody understood what that was, <laughs> but, I was just, but I, I, everybody else in the room and I'm just sitting there and I'm like, I know exactly what that is. Cause my brothers used to tell me, my brothers used to be subscribers of Fangoria and all like tr- all those magazines that the horror magazines back in the eighties and nineties. So they would tell me all this stuff that was going on and like who, so they told me about the toxic Avengers series. And within the first 20 minutes, when I saw a kid get his head rolled, though, right. like somebody literally roll, a, roll a car over his head. Yeah. He actually has saw the head explode. Yeah. Right. You're yeah, just like, like, this is fantastic. <laughs> and, now, now in the this movie, is great. Now in the movie, I remember in the cartoon, basically what happened was, was that Toxie was like this ordinary teenage kid. And right. in the cartoon, he liked this girl, like this blonde girl. Yep. And then she made him put on like a um, like a skirt or something like that, or like a, a, a ballerina outfit. And then he ended up falling yes. in the mutant stuff. Yes. Then he comes back. Does that happen in the movie, too? Yes. It's okay. actually it's pretty much. Um, it was kind of like a carry. It's kind of like a carry situation. Yeah, right. Where exactly. they just were hazing this kid, and then right. he just. He falls Absolutely. literally into a thing of a uh, bat of uh, toxic waste. Yeah, goes home and turns into the literally the toxic crusader. Right, right. He's like this geek. Yeah, I'm seeing the pictures here from the movie. He's like this geek, and they're all making fun of him. And then yeah, then he comes some back. of the best, some of the most creative kills I've ever seen in a, yeah. in a series. Yeah. Uh, the it, gory, it's trashy, <laughs> but at the same time, it's great. Yeah. I like I like stuff like that because the thing about it is is that I would rather watch films from the 1980s that use practical effects yeah. that use them to see a CGI fuck fest. That's pretty much half right. these movies are now. Right. I mean, they don't even have practical blood anymore. Half the shit yeah, CGI. It is, yeah, it's digital. <laughs> that you know, I digital. like. 
I I have I have more of an appreciation now for these horror films from like the eighties that like let's use food coloring and like yeah. old meat for this head what instead of like. I was watching. What's the, what's that? What's that? That movie they go to see at the movie theater. Day of the Dead is it? No, it's it's the one. It's the George A. Romero eighties movie there. Or the vampire, the uh, zombie movie. Uh, Day of the Dead or Dawn of the Dead? Day. It's Day, Day of the Dead. No, not, yeah. not, no, not the black and white one. And it's not Dawn. No, of the that Dead. was that, that's Night of the Living Dead. No, Day of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead's at the mall, and then Day of the Dead is the one in the eighties. And then he did the. Uh, he did Land of the Dead. I think that came out in two thousand and five with Dennis Hopper. I or... thought that was a sequel to the Dawn of the Dead movie. Uh, let me see here. Nineteen eighties. Day Day yeah, of the Dead. Remake. Yeah, Day of the yeah. Dead's the one I'm talking that's about. The... Yep, so that's the one that they used in um, Stranger Things three. Yep, Day of the Dead. Yep, that's it. That's on the Roku channel right now. Actually, that movie. But yeah, those movies were kind of, that Toxic Avenger movie was kind of like that. It was like that kind of blood, you know, practical effects and. You know, that, that's the problem with a lot of movies is that, like, the thing I liked about The Punisher in 2004, which should have got a sequel. Um, it should have. was, like, the, everything was, like, practical effects in that movie. Like, the car scene, the car crash. Right. You know, everything in that movie was just all practical effects. It wasn't this CGI. Because you can always tell when things are digital, you know? I think, like, movies like The Avengers can get away with it because they have good special effects. Right. But, you know, other movies out there that don't, like, Transporter 2, like, you should they show this lady shoot at a helicopter, and a helicopter explodes, and it's like, that looked fake. And there was like a helicopter explosion in Expendables 3, I think, and the thing looked cheesy and fake. It was like, come on, it's just, I hate when they use bad, bad special effects. I'd rather just see, like, practical. One movie, one of the worst movies I've ever seen is The Theater, which was um, Van Helsing with Hugh Jackman. Yeah, I skipped that one. Uh, which, because I was sitting there, and I'm like, well, it's the Universal Monsters. I'm like, so they have to do this right, and then, but every single monster that they had looked like absolute trash. That was my problem. And I was just like, oh god, it was so bad. Because it had it had a lot of good things going for it. It had Hugh Jackman as the lead. It had yep. Kate Beckinsale as the girl. So you can almost yep. not go wrong from that point right there. You have a good lead hero. Oh, the wolf, but they did the lead woman, <laughs> Kate Beckinsale. So everything was perfect from that point. Uh, when, I, when I saw them, I was excited for that movie when it was being made, I recall. And then all of a sudden it, it came out and the trailer came out. And I'm like, this is, I don't like the way Frankenstein looks. I don't like the way these vampires, nothing. I was watching Underworld Evolution the other day on Netflix. I, I couldn't even get past a few few minutes. I, I don't know, those Underworld movies I just never really got into as much. I wonder if, I wonder if Hugh Jackman, when he showed up for WWE, if The Undertaker was just waiting for him and be like, you stole my gimmick for uh, Van Helsing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, it was a tough movie. I could never get through that one either. It's Beck and Kate Beckinsale's movie history is really not all that good, though. If you look at her career, it's like the Underworld movies. I mean, eh, they're okay. Um, Pearl Harbor was terrible. Um, oh God. Click was okay, but it wasn't really one of Adam Sandler's best. So it's just I just got conf- I just confused that with anger management. So it just shows you how much that I remember. <laughs> oh right, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's crazy. Oh my goodness. His that's the thing with Adam Sandler. Like Happy Gilmore and Billy Madison, Waterboy, all time classics. I'll right. put those in, like I'll put those in all time comedy classics. Then Big Daddy, yeah. and then like Mr. Deeds. They're the same fucking movie. And if anybody tells me different, like. Mr. Deeds and Big Daddy are not the same. Yes, they are. They're the same movie. No, Don't I, try to sit here and tell me that. I absolutely agree because what happens at the end, it's one of the people that he becomes friends with or he's friends with that even though in the movie Adam Sandler gets money and in another movie he gets a kid. But what happens? Yeah. In the end, it actually goes to one of his friends. Same, yep. same result. Yeah, those, exactly. Those, you know, I was always noticed this is this is not to uh, pick on my, my friends, either my sisters or friends that are women, but um, I always tend to notice <laughs> that women tend to be the movies that like Big Daddy, that like Mr. Deeds, that like um, Liar Liar with Jim Carrey. Like I'll always be talking about like what my favorite Jim Carrey movies or Sandler movies, and always be my sisters or or a friend that's a woman, uh, lady friends. That's my my great aunt used to say. Uh, um, 
they used to always say, look, it always seems to be them that like these movies. I don't, I never liked those movies. I, Big Daddy, Big Daddy was okay. Uh, Mr. Deeds was all right, but I just, I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not uh, I don't know. I don't like these movies too much. I like, I like Happy Gilmore the best. I still think Happy Gilmore is my favorite Sandler movie ever made. Wedding, Wedding Singer is very good. Wedding Singer is awesome. Just, I'll, I'll throw that out there. Wedding Singer is probably like, you is probably his best romantic comedy. You know what? I take a step back. Wedding Singer is actually my favorite one now that I think of it. That I quote that one almost every week because there is <laughs> so much funny stuff in that movie. Uh, how about this? How about this? I can get my ass kicked for sticking my nose in other people's business. Sounds <laughs> like <a> stuff. <laughs> I'll tell you when I was a, when I was a teenager, and Steve Buscemi at that freaking wedding at the beginning of the movie. I I'm I was I that was one of the hardest times I ever got getting through a movie without freaking dying from laughing so hard. <laughs> it was like uh, the UPS scene and uh, Ace Ventura Pet Detective. I, I oh, lost God. my mind when I saw that scene. The first twenty times I saw that movie, I almost freaking died laughing so hard. But uh, when... Jimmy in in Wedding Singer is like, ooh, the best man, the better man. He's like. Thank you very self taught. Thank you very much. No lessons pop. And then all of a sudden, Santa goes, Oh, he's playing a guitar now. (laughs) 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 They'll be divorced in a year. The one part in Ace Ventura that makes me laugh is when he's trying to find the when he's looking at everybody's ring. When he's looking at the rings for the jewels. That scene makes me laugh. Hysterically, that every was, single time. That was Keith Myers from the Patriots on the track, and they don't they don't play with, him <laughs> with that role. But it was so funny. He's like chasing after Keith Myers. <laughs> chasing after Keith Myers. Like, um, oh man, those are some funny movies. Comedies aren't as good, I don't think, nowadays. I, I think the problem with no, a lot no. of comedies nowadays is like like there's a few good ones, like The Hangover. Um, the Hangover sequels actually were not as bad as people said. Um, the, the, the I didn't see three, but two is all right. The second one, the third one's pretty funny, actually. Mr. Chow's a freaking riot in the third one. <laughs> I actually thought Mr. Chow might have arguably been the funniest in the third one of all three of them, honestly. Um, but the problem with comedies nowadays is like they go, like a lot of them go for too much gross out humor. You know, it's like they don't just have like. Um, pure situational comedy like the wedding singer i mean like they they could have i mean that movie could have been basic as as whatever but they just went all all out with the outrageousness and that's just you know that's why um jim carrey always used to say i don't like to do comedy sequels even though he's starting to do them now out of desperation but um because it, uh, comedy is tough to imitate over and over and over again and the tough part about making a comedy movie is that when they're filming the movie and they do the humor backstage uh, or on the set, rather. The, 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 it's tough to... One thing is that they, they all laugh when they're filming the movie, right? And then after they do it, like 20 takes, it's not funny anymore. So you kind of lose grasp on what's funny and what's not. And then when it does get released, it's, you know, you know, are people going to watch it once and laugh? Or is it going to be something like Dumb and Dumber? You know, where it's laughed at over and over and over again to the end of the age. So comedy, it, comedy movies are always hit and miss. It's like... Like, for me, I mean, like, most people don't like the movie Saving Sar- uh, Saving uh, Silverman. I-, I think that's one of the funniest movies I've ever seen in my life. I, I think Steve Zahn and Jack Black were, were freaking hilarious in that movie. Other people, they don't. So it's like, comedy can be hit or miss, too, but I, I just don't think, like, Police Academy, like, they don't make movies like that anymore. Those just, I went back, we were all rewatching those a couple months ago. Those are mm-hmm. some of the funniest movies we've all ever seen in our lives, but you don't, you don't see that anymore. It's just, it's kind of a bygone a bygone thing nowadays, unfortunately. You know, you don't really get to see, um, you know, a lot of good original comedy like that anymore. Just, it kind of just all dies out, you know. And even like, even like doing this action sci-fi thing I'm doing right now on, with the poll online, you know, it's like I'm, I'm looking for characters from like the past couple of years and it's like all of a sudden all the characters I'm coming out with are from like the 80s, 90s. And that's mostly the majority are out of the 80s and 90s. Like, trying to come up with characters recently, you know, maybe up until 2005, sure I did. But after that, it's like, it's all superhero stuff now. It's all, that, that, I mean, it's great that superhero movies got as big as they did. But honestly, it's just, it's so excessive now to the point where it's just, it's um, flooded the market. It's like, nowadays, you can't watch, like, a good, like, like, there's no movies coming out that are, like, 
like the like when the Matrix came out, for example, the Matrix was kind of like the Terminator for a new era. It was that new era sci-fi action movie that was, you know, taking the world by storm. When Terminator 3 came out, it was like they were going to call the female Terminator the Terminatrix because the Terminator was still trying to be relevant. Um, that movie was only so-so, of course, but. Like you don't when, like when's the last time you watched the movie and said, "Man, this is like the Terminator or Matrix of its generation." Like you don't, you know. Now it's just it's mostly you know everyone's going to see the Avengers Endgame. The problem with the Avengers movies or that is it's either going to get reset or they're just going to keep going down the same path. But the problem I have is like, you know, now it's like Batman movies. I mean, I love Batman. Don't get me wrong, I'm a big fan. But it's like it's just yeah. so many so many resets, so many reboots. It's like. Yeah. You know, I grew up, I mean, there were three Batmans growing up, you know, for the most of my childhood, Keaton and Kilmer and Clooney, but now it's like, man, it's like, geez, now all of a sudden you're on, like, Bale, now Bale's gone, now it's Affleck, now it's frickin' Pattinson, and then all of a sudden what will happen in, like, three years is Pattinson will be gone for some something that happened, and, you know, you've had three Spider-Mans in, what, 14 years, I think it was, 2016, I think, or 2018 it was, it's like, geez, it's... You know, it's, they make it so many superhero movies. It's just, it's, it's, but it's like it's, it's being done at the sacrifice of, like when I grew up, it was like Schwarzenegger and Stallone, and it was Chuck Norris and Van Damme and Bruce Willis. You know, now it's like Robert Downey. You Jr. don't get a lot of these big action stars anymore. No, no, you don't. And it's just, I think the one thing about the Matrix though is the Matrix kind of ended it too because the Matrix took Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves was not known as, like, a big-time martial artist. Like, he, he has been with John Wick. At the time, it was like, oh, yeah, we can make him bend over backwards without even needing the ability to... Not that anybody could do it in real life anyways, but, you know, we can make him bend over backwards and, you know, dodge bullets. And, you know, we don't really need Bruce Lee. You know, like, a guy like Bruce Lee, you'd be, have a hard time getting over as a star in Hollywood because, you know, we can just... Well, we can just use this other guy that looks better on camera, and he... um you know he's, he's he's digitally enhanced. You know it's you know it's just it's just like that nowadays. It's you know someone like Robert like like Robert Downey Jr. He doesn't need to lift weights. It's just he's going to be in the suit all day. It's you know I don't know. It's just it's it's tough. It's just I missed a lot of those old action movies, martial arts movies. You know it's just I mean they're doing Ip Man and everything too now, but. It's just I I miss those movies being the more mainstream hits, you know. It's like I go to a, like a new Rambo movie comes out or a new Terminator movie comes out, I'm hyped up for it. But then it's like now all of a sudden these Terminator movies and Predator movies, it's like those used to be like first rate sci-fi action movies. Now they come out, and it's like yeah, no one cares. You were you were one of the people that paid the 15 minute, you know, you paid towards the 15 million dollar opening weekend box office. You know, thinking an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie or Stallone movie would bomb like that back then, it was completely unheard of. You know, when those guys used to make movies, everybody saw it. But it, it's just a different world now. But I think, you know, digital digital streaming might end up getting a real big victory out of this coronavirus. I'm telling you that much right now because those streaming apps are killing it right now. Yeah, no, that sounds about right. I mean, I mean, you know, it was funny. Like my roommate, and I, we were just talking about it last night. How, um, you know, Keanu Reeves, like, you know, what maybe disappeared for a while, and all of a sudden came back and really started developing a great new original uh, trilogy with uh, John Wick. Um, but then, kind of going back to something with. Um, you know, with another sequel to um, Bill and Ted. Oh, yeah, Bill and Ted, yeah. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I don't, yeah, like you said, I don't think we'll ever get, like, you know, with action movies, like with the major action stars like Arnold, um, Bruce Willis, um, Sylvester Stallone. Um, none of like guys that or movies that we see that are full of action movies, it's just not the same anymore. Yeah, it's completely different. It's crazy. It's um, I, I'm I'm sitting here. I'm excited for the new Matrix. I'm happy that that series is back. What's funny is that the Matrix sequels, or if you go back and watch them now, you're actually your your impression of those movies will go up a little bit compared to what it was a couple of years ago because I think that the technological mindset that we have now, we've become more technologically educated. 
that those movies at the time were so technologically over the top that it was like it was kind of ahead of our time, you know. But I went back and watched the sequels a couple months ago. Or it was last year now, and I was watching them like, man, the Matrix Revolutions is a little bit better than I remember it being now. You know, I, I just picked up on things quicker, got things quicker because I have more of a technological sense of the future now. Um, but I think the third Revo Matrix Revolutions committed the trilogy sin. And I, I always say this, is I, I always say that, you know, when you have an original movie, you add new characters in the sequel, but then you never really add too many new characters in the third movie. Like, Return of the Jedi did that with the Ewoks. X-Men The Last Stand criminally did that. They just had, like, useless new characters all over the place, and The Matrix Revolutions did the same thing. Like, it's okay to add new characters in the, any movie, but you don't want to take the focus away from the main characters. And that's what the Matrix Revolution still kind of did. It's, it's, it's better than I remember it being, of course, but it's it's still, um, it spent too much time focusing on non-essential characters. Like, you know, having, like, the geeky kid who's almost supposed to be like, hey, you, that, like, he's you in the movie. You're the geek kid who fanboys for frickin' uh, Neo. Yeah, that's you. Yeah, you, yeah he, he's like you in the movie. It's like... I'm not, I'm not like that freaking geek. Shut up. You know? Zion, <laughs> <laughs> the war is over. And everyone's like, yeah, the movie's over. Everyone already walked out of the movie theater. It's, another, another sin that movies commit is exactly what The Purge the purge did. And The Hunger Games did this, too. Was that, like, when the first Purge came out, it was like, oh, this is a nice little template for a movie. You could make, like movie after movie after movie, year after year after year, with stories about Purge Night. Like, every movie is a different Purge year. But, like, the problem with everyone is they always want, like, the revolution story. They always want to have, like, the story where, well, all these people are put in this certain, like the Hunger Games, people are put in these certain sec uh, a set of circumstances, and now they gotta, you know, now they gotta revolt now and fight the people that are putting them in that, and then defeat them and fight them so the freaking purge does that in what three movies it's like you know just just use the formula never never have like once you start to have them go after the people it, that's why people like empire strikes back better than return of the jedi because people like the feel that the series isn't going to end you know once once you once you have them start going after the the, the the faceless villains like resident evil started to do that recently then that's when all the interest is just gone. Like, if you just keep the template of just people, random characters year after year being placed in the purge and that they never actually stop the people that are doing it, you, you have a plot device that can be used over and over and over again every year. It's, every, it's like a new season of a reality TV show. You don't actually try to stop. Then what happened to them was that they stopped the four founding fathers in the um, third movie. Uh, president, whatever the heck that third one was called, and then what happened was is they made the fourth one called the First Purge, a prequel. It's like, see, that that's the admission of messing up. You you now you're going back to the beginning, but now the suspense is over because you know that they've already went after the people that were behind the whole thing. So now no one really cares anymore, and now your whole series is completely gone. You know, whereas when I got into it was when the purge anarchy i missed the first purge i thought it was some movie i wouldn't be interested in but then the purge anarchy was actually airing during raw one night i'm like man that movie looks like it looks like um um assault on precinct 13 a little bit the original and i'm like man that's interesting but they, they blow it because they they try to they try to go all the way with revolution stories and those you know the revolts it's they they just won't leave it alone don't go in that direction that was the problem with the first Independence Day movie, was that they went all the way. They they beat them entirely. And another thing was about that movie is they had them destroy too many cities. Like you know, it was it was a one and done all out movie. But the thing was, box office wise, they could have made a lot of money off two sequels if they, if they had if they had stretched Independence Day out three movies instead of having them beat them at the very end of that movie and let that thing stretch out for three movies. They could have made they could have made money till the year two thousand with that franchise. You know, but they went I, all the way. I think there was um, at one time. I think there was a rumor for like yeah. two Independence Day movies to be made. Yep. But I think the whole story got changed um, 
when Will Smith didn't want that's to return. Right. That's correct. Yes, that's 100% correct. They were going to make two of no, them. I mean, I mean, honestly, and here was the thing. I mean, I guess maybe the, they were counting their – the studio was counting their eggs – in the basket way before it had so like counting on making a sequel before your main attraction star in Will yep. Smith would decide to return. He did um what movie did he, he did another movie instead. He did um Oh, he did Suicide Squad instead. That's right, he did Suicide he picked Suicide Squad over that was what he did. Yep, that's I, what he, yeah, that's what he did, yep. That was the exact movie. He had he'd come down to those two movies. I, I still think Independence Day, though, they, they did so much destruction to Earth in that first movie that it really didn't make sense to even do a sequel until sometime in the future when the world had rebuilt itself. You know, you know what I mean? It was like right. 20 years later, okay, now, okay, Earth's rebuilt, but then they just went to the complete. It actually wasn't too bad. They just went over the top again and just tried to upstage the original. Like that Earth-warping machine they had, I was like, geez, I mean... Like, you can't, you can never let their whole Earth get beat up that bad, you know, it's, you know, jeez. Like, I, I wrote an Alien series on my screenplays many, many years ago. I probably told you guys about it at one point or another. The first movie is not an Alien Invasion movie. The second movie is an Alien Invasion movie. And that Alien Invasion only goes so far before the, the plot twists. And then something kind of, there's, there's like a, 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 um, a uh, what's, what's the word for it, a, um, a plot twist. A plot twist. Yeah, it's like a plot twist during the invasion that makes you think the invasion's over, mm-hmm. but it's really not. And then the whole rest of the movie and the third movie, it's really happening, but you don't think it's happening, but it really is. And then you don't find out till the end of the third one that that actually has still been going on the whole time. But there was a, there was there was a, a plot that happens where they they make it seem like they're not invading anymore, but they really have been. It was like it was like uses a fear type. So it's just I don't want to give away too many of my ideas on on the internet here tonight. But <laughs> let me just put it this way: I didn't Independence Day the first one. I Independence Day the <laughs> second one, and then flipped the switch right in the right before right around the third act and stopped them from going the distance, only to reenact the thing at the end of the third movie. And it was freaking brilliance. That's why I should be working in Hollywood because I I got the smarts like that, right? <laughs> but that's the problem with Independence Day. Well, they- yeah. I mean, I guess so. The problem is, like, and you probably said best is, you know, I think, I think a lot of these movies, um, they don't necessarily write with the intention of a sequel. Yes. They only go with a sequel based off of how box office is. Then you have movies too that write with the intention of having a sequel. Um, like movies right. that uh, don't intend that become big, like Independence Day, for example. Men in Black might have been another example. Um, and then you have the movies that intend to be um, a sequel, like Planet of the Apes with Mark Wahlberg. They have like they they set up a complete sequel right at the end of the first one, and said it never got its sequel. Predators with Adrian Brody set a sequel up, never got it. You know, see, it's like it's almost like twofold. You have those movies that go all the way, don't intend to have a sequel. And then, our complete hit. Then you yeah, have I the think movie. that's I yeah. think that's what makes Marvel successful is because they know that they have the backing mm-hmm. of a full fledged um, loyal fan base to mm-hmm. go to the movies, and they're going to get their money back. Mm-hmm. So they know that okay, we can keep making movies. So let's start developing long-term storylines for movies that will be not coming out for the next three, four years. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, mean, I mean, hell, look at it. Um, shoot, when did the first Avengers come out? 2012. It came out, yeah, 2012. Um, that was the first time we actually got to see Thanos, and that was supposed yeah. to be the long-term right. villain. Right. When was he finally the villain in the movies? Not till 2019, mm-hmm. 2020, or 2018, 2019. So, 2018, yeah. Like, so that was a really good job storytelling. Like, by Marvel to, like, okay, you know that Thanos is to be the long term story or long term villain. Mm-hmm. And to have him finally revealed, like, mm-hmm. that was just brilliant. But then again, when, uh, 
you know, unfortunately, some of these franchises or movies, they can't afford to, like, take those chances. They got to, like, sometimes have to leave everything on the table right. just to right. finally get approved. And then it's like, okay, we've done all this. Now where do we go? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's exactly it. Um, like, I, I thought that they did that nicely. They, they didn't rush it. They... They, they had everything very well paced, and they did a very good job of making blockbuster standalone movies all the while, and then planting seeds of, like, you know, like, every end of every movie in the after credits, there's usually some kind of planting of a seed to kind of show you that, you know, they might be, like, uh, Captain America, the first Avenger, was a perfect example. When he shows up in the future at the very end, and he's, like, in the middle of Times Square, like, what the hell's going on? I mean, that's... Mm-hmm. I mean, that was well done. Very well done. You know, it's just... Something that you know they know how to they they know how to plot everything perfectly right and maintain a really good exciting pace the whole entire time. But I guess that's the luxury too of having like a good studio. You know they were good writers, but then the I mean well technically they they did intend to have sequels after the first Iron Man movie because Stark showed up uh, not Stark um, Fury showed up at the end of Iron Man and talked about the Avengers Initiative I believe right, right, right yep. at the very end yep so. They, I think the only thing that really hurt them early on was the Incredible Hulk movie with Edward Norton. They mm-hmm. kind of rebooted that, and it was Edward Norton. Then all of a sudden, it was Mark Ruffalo. I think Ruffalo was better, honestly. But um, I didn't like the way the Hulk's character evolved, though. I thought that that kind of became really shoddy, though. He became more of like a Mark Ruffalo-Hulk hybrid, and then he was afraid of Thanos. So it was like, uh, I don't know. And then... Um... I will actually, and I think, again, I know we talked about this before, and I think, you know, for a movie like John Wick, like, I, you know, I don't know for sure if when John Wick in 2014 was first made, I don't know if their intention was to make sequels, but... I don't think so. Like, for how successful that movie was, it was like, okay, you can easily, and what you can do is find a way to make a sequel because technically he retired and um you know sorry i was getting a little distracted there because of what dan posted um you know that way you know you can get him to come out of retirement and then you always have these certain rules that need to be followed and i think they did a great job turning that second one being like okay well John Wick in the first two movies was the hunter. Now we're going to turn this third movie into the hunted. Yeah. Um, So I'm curious about with the fourth one now. Um, I don't like how they had him cut off his hand, though, as a sacrifice. His finger, though, I mean, I didn't like that too much. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I was like, oh, jeez. Um, no, I'm curious about the fourth one, though. See what direction they go. I mean, um, you know, it was, it was cool at the end. Keanu Reeves has his, I mean, it's been great having that reunion with, um, oh, God, uh, what's his face? Why am I space? Oh, I, thank you. Uh, yeah, the actor's name, I can't remember his name right now. Um, oh, Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. And then there's a qu- there's questions about it, like um, with um, you know with uh, Winston. Did Winston know that John Wick was faking his death, or did Winston, to save his own skin, try to kill John Wick as again try to as a way to save his own skin? Right. Yeah. So that's that's gonna be something really to keep an eye on for uh, John Wick Four. Yeah, I can't wait for that movie at all. It's gonna be a long wait, but I think that got pushed back too, as a matter of fact. So it did. Yeah. Um, how apparently this was supposed um, John Wick Four and The Matrix were supposed to premiere on the same night, yeah. but with the coronavirus, it pushed back. Uh, I want to say John Wick Four. I never thought they'd make another Matrix movie, but, you know, the one thing that made me realize that they could, so people talk about how Keanu, like, people might say, like, how did Keanu and Carrie Ann Moss, um, they both died outside of the Matrix. How could they possibly be alive? Well, I am wondering, 
if Zion itself was the Matrix itself. Because Keanu Reeves, at the end of the second one, Reloaded, is able to stop the Sentinel with his, his powers within the Matrix. So I'm wondering if that Zion's actually the Matrix as well. In that when Keanu Reeves gets uh, on gets somehow gets unloaded from the fake like the the matrix that we've known is the fake matrix and that zion is actually the real matrix and that there's actually another they're actually hooked up into the zion matrix which is actually a fake as well which means that they didn't really actually die and that keanu reeves with long hair and a beard was actually real life keanu reeves the whole time in in the real world so i'm wondering i'm wondering i'm looking forward to seeing if uh that's that's what the heck ends up happening. But the thing is, too, is that the what what is the, that Frenchman there in the second one? He ends up talking. He, apparently, people don't know this, but he was he was like Neo in a previous incarnation of the Matrix. He was the one. So there was like really six previous Matrixes prior to the Matrix that we saw in the, the trilogy. So Keanu Reeves was the one in the present Matrix that we know, but that Matrix has now been destroyed. After what happened at the end of the, the the new one, but they they talked about how they destroyed previous matrixes. The architect had they had you know the architect says that in the second one, we've destroyed mm-hmm. pre uh, previous matrixes, um, we've rebuilt them a couple of times, and I think he tells Keanu you know we've rebuilt so and so, and he goes that's why you'll never see me again, and so forth and so on. Then he's talking to Oracle. It's apparent that maybe Oracle might be like a system herself, but the thing is too is that. People will say, oh, how can there be a new Matrix when the Matrix is gone? Well, here's the thing. They already t- they talked about that in the second one. The Matrix was destroyed five or six times previously. And then I think he said, if this we don't like the way this one goes, we'll just destroy it and move on to another one as well. And we'll keep, we'll keep moving on over and over and over again. And then that's why I think Keanu says, I, if my guess is that you're a product of the machine world, but the architect was really just a computerized version of himself in the Matrix. So, so if Keanu tried to kill him, it wouldn't have mattered. The guy was just a, a computerized version. And then the agents were just basically like a um, antivirus software, basically trying to keep the Matrix clean. So, but no, it'd be interesting to see what they do, but it is plausible that there can be another sequel. There could be a definite way to kind of um, explain that they're still alive somehow, or, mm-hmm. you, know, you know, I know Carrie Ann Moss got impaled like that, but I'm wondering if maybe Zion itself was the Matrix. Because it didn't make any sense that it was the real world at the end of Matrix Reloaded. Yet Keanu Reeves was actually able to take down that freaking Sentinel like he did, and, and shut it down with powers that were similar to what Neo was doing in the Matrix. How was he? How was he able to do that? So that tells me right then and there that maybe, maybe that Matrix that we thought, you know, maybe Zion was the Matrix too, you know. So. Uh, can you imagine what the what if if um, Will Smith actually had? Um, took the role of Neo in the Matrix and you know, passed on the Wild Wild West. You know what my idea is? is? I've had this idea recently. My idea is that what if they did have Will Smith come in this new movie? I don't think he's going to do it, but well, that's already, already, we're already making it. But what if they had Will Smith join the fourth movie and basically he could be like the one of another version of the Matrix in that him and Keanu Reeves have to work together. So they could basically, I think that'd be pretty awesome, actually. Will Smith could be in it, and he could be someone who was like Neo in another version of the Matrix, and now maybe they're outside the Zion Matrix or maybe, or whatnot, and now they're working together. It's like a couple different people who are the one at one point. You know what I mean? All working together. I think that would be... um, That's actually an interesting thought about that. It would be like Triple X... Three when they had like the hero of the first one, I kind of call it the, the, yeah the kind of the Planet of the Apes idea. And beneath the Planet of the Apes, they had a new hero. And then at the end, he runs into Charlton Heston, who was <laughs> the hero of the first movie. And then it was the hero of the first Planet of the Apes and the hero of the second Planet of the Apes working together as a team. And that happened in Triple uh, X three, I think. Um, the hero of the first one and the hero of the second one worked together. I yep. kind of like mm-hmm. that concept. But I think that could work, because you could say, hey, you know, Will Smith passed on the Matrix way back when, but let's kind of go with that fan fiction idea, and let's actually have him come into the new movie, and he can be like someone that was the one at another time, and then he could be buddies with like uh, Morpheus, Trinity, and, and Neo, and they right. can work together. I mean, it'd be pretty cool, I think. 
No, I, I was like, um, like earlier today, like on um, IMDb, like they always do these videos um, where actors or actresses, you know, they took on roles, but here were some roles that they were trying to go for and either passed or um, never got the role. Mm. And um, uh, who were they talking about? They were talking about, um, I want to say it was Jennifer uh, Conley. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she was, um, one of the roles she was, like, trying to compete for was in Pretty Woman, but I think, you know, I think, you know, with her age, being at 19 at the time, so they went with uh, Julia Roberts, and then, um, I don't know, it was interesting. I always find those uh, videos interesting because, you know, you always hear, then they talk about, like, oh, here's some actors or actresses that were trying, that were going for that role, or, you know, oh, they passed on this role, which ended up going to so-and-so, and so then it's like, wow, like, what if that person took it? And yeah. Oh, it's crazy, like, alternative history. I know that one thing, too, is that Keanu Reeves' character, we can all agree, before he was unlocked from the Matrix and before he went back into the Matrix as the, you know, Neo, um, he didn't have the ability to stop bullets initially. He eventually learned that ability by the end of the first movie. And then in the second movie, he was able to fly. Excuse me, at the end of the first movie, he was able to fly. And then he was able to do all kinds of other crazy things. Then at the end of the second movie in Zion, he's now developing the ability to stop the Sentinels. So there's a post online I just found, and it says, is the Matrix, or it's a Reddit post here, Neo's real-world powers explained, a.k.a. Zion is really real. Um, it might not be real. I mean, maybe he's also developing those powers now. You know, it's like he says, and Morpheus says in the first one, he's beginning to believe. Well, maybe he's got so used to his belief in the first Matrix, the actual Matrix that we know of, that really he's exposing, or we're starting to learn that Zion isn't really real, because now all of a sudden he's able to use all of his powers and what's supposed to be the real world. So I'm interested in seeing if that's the um, that's the direction this thing ends up going, and for sure. I, I, that'd be awesome, honestly. But um, that's about it. So I think I'm going to wrap up here. Did you want to add anything? I don't want to cut you off without a response. Uh, no, no, I'm okay. All right. Yeah, we'll cut it off here tonight. It's almost one. It's one thirty in the morning, actually. Now to look at the clock. So, all right, Danny, still with us, or did you head off? No, I'm here. All right, Dan. Thanks very much for your time tonight. Glad we could get your uh, no holds barred show. Maybe we'll try to do an over the top <laughs> uh, episode here in a, in a couple of weeks or something. No, yeah, it was fun. We should definitely do this again. Yeah, it sounds. Yeah, good. I enjoyed it. We'll bring someone we'll put on yeah. a pot of tea next time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make tea and scrub heads. All righty then. <laughs> <laughs> Permission to come aboard, sir. All righty. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Yeah, go, great time tonight. It was a good time. It was good catching up. It's Use your phrasers. Yeah, quarantine, <laughs> quarantine lockdown show. <laughs> <laughs> all right very good guys thank you for your time have a good night it's only eric night's still young over in nevada eric <laughs> yeah unfor yeah it's such a shame that you know still have to stay in otherwise yeah that would be a fun time to go out yeah they're probably they're look out for zeus yeah they're supposed, to, they're supposed to lift the ban the uh shelter in place ban or whatever it is here the uh stay at home advisory on the on monday but I'm almost anticipating Charlie Baker's and our governor is going to have a press conference and say, uh, nope, that's going out another two weeks. So it's, it's going to keep being two weeks till the end of time, probably. It's going to be 2076 yeah. by the time we uh, don't have to wear facial masks anymore. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, all right, guys. Thank you for your time. Anyone listening tonight that's still listening, thank you as well for tuning in. Rip it, brother. <laughs> <We're brother. laughs> all right guys i'm gonna sign the show off have a great night guys thank you for your Sounds time good. i appreciate it all thanks, right. good night. Thanks,